Hey, everybody. Remember when you'd say hey when you were a kid and someone would go hey is for horses? No, nobody ever did that to me. Travis, never? No. I wasn't friends with total assholes. <laughs> My friends are filled with humor. <laughs> would you do that or would your friends do that to you? This was just something people said. Hey, 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 it's for horses. That was a way of like them telling you, oh, like teachers would even do it. Like that's not polite to say hey. Oh. So that's kind of a lesson. No, see, we grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s, and that's when all the rules got thrown out the window. I, all... wish, you, I wish you grew up until the early 2000s, September of 2001 to be exact. <laughs> so you wish that I had died in 9-11? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Or they're about. Oh, no, no. The Gen Xers, they left behind us a trail of new, no rules. No rules. So saying hey was no longer impolite. It was a greeting. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it just got crazy. Just my generation didn't care for it. It just got crazy. Well, welcome to the show. We have a busy show today. Yes, we do. We have a very busy show. Jason Ellis is stopping by. Uh, Laura Jane Grace from the band Against Me is stopping by. She's got a book out and a very, very, uh, I guess, Fascinating story. Yeah. Um, that I'm excited to talk to her about. And uh, Nick Mo, uh, uh, Nick Kroll no. and John Mullaney. Nick Mullaney. Why don't I just call you guys Nick <laughs> Mullaney, huh? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, from Oh Hello are coming by. I got to see them on Broadway a couple weeks ago. Oh, you went? Yeah. It was really funny. And it's fun to watch because I, th- I, I would assume that they end up throwing in a bunch of improv because... They were laughing a bunch on stage, like they were breaking character and laughing, which I enjoy. I never, it doesn't take me out of it. I just think it's fun. I think it makes people laugh more for the most part, unless you're over the top about it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed them. Uh, I did the I did their show at the Cherry Lane Theater when they were running it. Oh, were fine. you one of the celebrity guests? Or just guests. <laughs> you don't want to refer was, to yourself that? No, no one else does either. I was just <laughs> one of their guests. Yeah, you're one of the Cherry Lane Theater guests, not one of the Broadway guests. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, I was bummed out because they do a segment on the show where they interview somebody and it's they bring in a celebrity and they brought in Alan Alda and they brought oh, wow. in yeah, they brought in a ton of people. But when I went, they just brought up the guy who's starring in School of Rock on Broadway. I didn't know who he was. Well, I wanted a big celebrity to come out and talk about tuna. Well, on Broadway that is a big celebrity. I guess, but that, 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 that it is a very inside Broadway show. I, I was surprised and how much knowledge they had about Broadway culture, like enough that they could make that kind of a parody about it. it was well, is it about a parody about Broadway? Isn't it a parody about two old men? Yeah, no, but it's, it's there's a lot of theater references. Like yeah. like a theater crowd would especially think it was funny. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They do a great job. It's I don't a, know much about theater. You don't? No, I'm not a theater guy. No? No. Why not? You live in New York. You could, there's there's so much great theater. I don't enjoy live plays. I went, I went to a few in the last couple of years that were fun. Like I love Book of Mormon. I loved a few other ones, but I just don't enjoy a play. Right. Normally, I don't like it. What else besides Book of Mormon did you like? Because Book of Mormon is an easy one to like. I, know I, I it can't is. imagine anybody not liking it. I enjoyed Filthy. Bob Saget's play. What was that? Um, I forget what it was called. Where he played the ventrilo- there was, he played the preacher, and there was the ventriloquist. Something with God. Um, hand to God. Oh. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed, uh, Robin Williams did a play, I think, called, um, Tiger, something, um, a, a Bengal Tiger in Baghdad or something. It was so a really you, bizarre conceptual play where he played, like, a tiger, but I enjoyed that. You just like plays with extremely funny people. Well, I mean, if, if the, yeah, if it's well done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the I have to enjoy. Oh, Chris Rock's play was great, too. The Motherfucker in the Hat. Oh, yeah, I didn't see it. I enjoyed that a lot. I didn't see it, but I, uh... He was with Bobby Cannavale, and, uh... You know, and he was actually good with Bobby. Like his to to do a theater. Bobby's show, not that great of an actor, though, is he? No, nah, I know he kind of is. He's very very average. But yeah. The, but to see such a great New York actor, and then Chris actually looked like he belonged with him. So it was, you know, it was good. Usually a guy like that good. If you're doing something with him, you look like you look like pretty awful next to him. Yeah. But it was his. Was it was Chris Rock just acting in it? He didn't write it or anything. I don't know if he wrote it or not. I think yeah. he, it, it was his. It was his show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were talking before the show started about poor Chris Christie and all the time he wasted. He wasted all this time just goofily standing behind Donald Trump. Because you remember when Donald Trump would give these speeches, Chris Christie was the first guy of the Republican candidates who lost to back Trump. He was the first guy to stand behind him in the speeches, to do the whole thing. Ben Carson picked up after that and a couple of the other ones did. But Chris Christie was the first one, and he traveled with him, and he opened for him, and he did all of it. And 
obviously it was because he wanted Donald Trump to win and he wanted a position in the Donald Trump, you know, Memphis Mafia cabinet. The vice president was the first uh, possible thought. Everyone thought he was going to be the, the VP choice. Right. And he wasn't even close, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think that Trump ever seriously considered him for vice president. You think it's always been this bridge problem? I hate to say bridge gate. No, I think that I think that with Chris Christie, like he's an outspoken guy. I, he is a politician, but he's a pretty outspoken guy. And I think from the beginning, Donald wouldn't bring in an outspoken guy as a vice president. Yeah, he wanted two of somebody. Them. Yeah. So I don't. Th- and plus, Chris Christie, like he never really recovered from working with Obama during the hurricane. So, like, Republicans are so mad at him for it. So you need, like, Mike Pence is very, very conservative. What did they want Chris Christie to do when there was a hurricane that hit New Jersey? I agree with that. What I think the fuck it's... is wrong with the president coming in? Like, what, what would you want the Democratic uh, people to, to be to refuse George Bush's help right. uh, after Katrina? It's just stupid. Yeah, the idea that there is no spot at all for the parties to come together. Like, there is no context where people can work together is insane. It's ludicrous. So they gave him the full boot because he had got he was like he leading the trans to the transition team and then he got knocked down to just being on it and right. now I think is he totally out? He's out. They gave him out. a bootski, huh? Apparently Donald's not even he's not even, he's not even talking to him anymore. I heard he didn't like that he was uh, letting this lady take the fall for the bridge gate and that really annoyed Trump. Isn't that great? This that crying after, mother. After all this time, bridge gate is still. Haunting that big oaf. A few fucking traffic cones. <laughs> yeah. 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 Holy shit. He gets pissed off. He tries to flex a little power. That's one of those things that like we were talking about before. That's a one day decision. Yep. It's not like he goes, okay, in two weeks I'm planning this big elaborate traffic jam. We're finally going to get him back. He just goes, all right, shut down a couple lanes. Let's fuck with this guy a little bit. And someone died. A, right. woman, a woman died, I think, in an ambulance, which was, the, again, she may have died anyway, but. But. That's why you can't just shut down traffic for no reason. Yeah. Um, but so at that, so he makes the decision to do it. And after all this time, that one moment, that one day that he decided to make that call. That's right. It's haunting him and it has cost him a position in the White House. Yeah, it really fucked him good. It really did. And it's not like he's getting back to the White House anytime. Like he's not going to get ever get elected president. Right. Not by a long shot. And I don't see a context where he ends up, I guess, in many, maybe in many years, if he's still alive. How are they spinning it? Saying, like, what are they saying? Like, well, um, you know, we, we just decided because they had just demoted him. They didn't kick him out. Right. I haven't heard what Trump's people are actually saying. All I'm hearing is the articles that are reporting that Donald Trump's people do not like the way he's handled Bridgegate, do not like what Chris Christie did to that woman. Yeah. And they want nothing to do with him. I think they know that this is a, I like to say uh, in the political world, it's a ticking time bomb. And they're probably thinking that eventually this is going to blow up and they don't want to be anywhere near it. I get, it's been ticking for like a year. Well, I mean, that's probably their thinking now, whereas they gave him a position and they're thinking this is a ticking time bomb. Have you ever worked on a campaign? I haven't, but I've been consulted. <laughs> you have? Yes, I have. But you've been consulted? <laughs> sure. About what? It's what to do. Wouldn't you consult? I meant they've, they've, I've been consulted. No, they've asked me. Both are correct. Yes, I see. I see. Uh, let's go to... Uh, oh, he's right there. He's a fat fuck. That's what Trump said. <laughs> <laughs> that fat fuck? No, you won't see him yeah. no more. <laughs> they probably had an argument over fast food on the private plane, or they had to throw luggage out when Chris Christie got on the plane to take off because he's fat. Melania probably Whoa. made him uh, made Donald stop hanging out with Chris Christie. That's probably why his ass and thighs got so yeah. big. Because Chris was like, you know, they say all this bad stuff about fat food it doesn't do anything it's really and you see mcdonald's is using real chicken now it's really not bad for you you're starting to look like him <laughs> she said that to her husband yeah at the end of it you have to get rid of him his big hips trump's hips are big <laughs> <laughs> they did they've expanded quite a bit quite a bit and i i will make the prediction that donald trump will continue to get fatter while he's president do you think that he had a nice meal at the 21 club oh yeah he, he had low-fat grilled chicken or no, that wasn't what he with decided fruit for on. dessert no, 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 I don't think so. I think he had a, a nice big steak. I th- he doesn't drink alcohol, so I think he had uh, soft drinks with some refills. I think he had some Coca-Cola. And then for dessert, I think he had a nice big cheesecake or something like that with dripping dripping fruit syrup. Do you think he's been going to the gym like he should or he's a little too busy? Right now, 
He's a little bogged down. I don't. I, I think the gym is on the back burner. He's more focusing on business and politics. Um, but he probably intends on getting back there. He knows he can. He'll be able to get back there. Do at you some like point. creamed spinach? No. It's fucking hideous. No, I don't. Creamed like... corn can suck a dick too. It's fucking terrible. No, no, I don't like any of that stuff. I like corn by itself, and that's it. Me too. Yeah. We're out of some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll have the corn. Do you have any planted and some feces? Yeah. Y'all have a log of corn, please? Yeah. I, I need a new knife and fork before my main course. There's some leftover shit in between the prongs. Kevin in New Jersey. <laughs> Welcome to Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. What's up, boys? Hi, Kev. Hey, man. Hey, listen, why isn't anybody talking about... Um, so, apparently, uh, Kushner, you know, who's uh, Donald's son-in-law? Yeah. His father was jailed by Chris Christie. Oh, I did hear that. Oh, yeah. that's right. So, so that's going to be a little awkward. I'll bet you that that was the part bit. that might have went into it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll bet that goes into it. And Donald's like, look... We want Chris Christie, because Chris Christie was good for him to have on the campaign. Mm -hmm. When he's running for president, he's like, look, I now, all the politicians hate me. All the Republicans hate me. At least I have one guy who's a governor who says I support Trump. Like, let me keep him on board, knowing full well. But I don't like what you did. Right. I don't like what you did to my son-in-law's dad. I also think it's this woman, though. I think that this is a big mess. Well, I think, I think that they're, they were probably waiting. And when they saw this woman, they were like, "Yep, that's what we were looking for." Goodbye. Yeah, it's like when when you want to when you want to fire somebody in business, right? And you yeah. just build a case and build a case and build a case. You don't do anything until finally there's one mistake, and you can just get them, and you're out the door. That's probably what they did to Chris Christie. But but what, when did they finally say like you can't even be on the team at all? Like he was leading the team, right? And then, they, well, yeah, it was definitely a slow transition. They were like, you're still on the team. We're just picking a different leader, just somebody who's got a little more Washington experience. You yes. have government experience, but we just, we're, we're picking somebody with a little Washington and experience. And someone, we prepped for someone who hasn't killed someone by putting traffic cones up. <laughs> <laughs> someone who hasn't killed someone with traffic cones. <laughs> also, the person we're deciding... Quite a bit slimmer. Yeah, quite, a lot slimmer. Quite, quite, quite a looks bit. a lot better in the photos. Yeah, quite a bit slimmer. And then Melania goes, and not such a bad influence on Donald. Yeah. <laughs> just just a bad influence on his eating habits. You think Melania hated it when she, like, she'd walk into the situation room and she'd smell that McDonald's fries smell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fattening up. <laughs> Chris Christie's just going, Melania, help yourself. No, Chris, I don't want any. You think Donald doesn't mind uh, staying for dessert when he goes out for dinner? When he's at the 21 Club? I strongly suspect he has a good dessert. Oh, yeah, he does. No, you know what they do? They probably get a bunch of different desserts and they just pick. Like, you know, you have like 10 different desserts come to the table. Yeah. Oh, they have a little bit of everything. That's when you really fucking fatten up. Because you convince yourself you're only having two bites, but it's two bites of lemon cake, two bites of bread pudding, two bites of this. So Next you... thing you know, you're shitting blood. <laughs> is that how that works? Yes, it is. <laughs> so you've effectively had three and a half desserts while you've been sitting there. Yeah. Just eating bites of everything. Yeah, it's, it's always a big risk. Uh, plus, Donald takes his saliva bites. He's spitting all over all the desserts, so nobody. That's okay, Donald. You can have it. You, you can eat it. the whole thing. I don't like share. I don't like forks going into where I'm going to eat other people's forks. Me neither. I don't like sharing food at all. No, at with all. with your wife. I'll let her have a yeah, but yeah, not like who's going to say a bite. I'll a let her bite. have a bite. That's what I will. <laughs> like I'll be like, yeah, take if you want to try it. Take a piece off, but we're not going to be simultaneously eating this dish. I don't like that either, and it's not a money thing. I'm like, I'll buy you one. Yeah, I'll tell a woman like she'll be like. Well, I'm not gonna go that far, but I get what you're if saying. She, if we're having a salad, she's like, "Oh, we just get a sa salad." I'm like, uh, "Are you hungry? I'll get you, you. Do you want a whole salad? I'll eat a salad." I try to get them just to get a duplicate copy. Yeah, I don't want to save the money. It's not a chiseler thing. I just don't want their fucking their dirty mouth smelling fork in my food. I do that too. I get bitchy so quick too. She goes like, Jess is like, are you getting fries? And I'm like, Jess, if you want fries, get fries. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I, I'm always like, I don't need you and your choices dictating what I order. Yeah. You want fries, get fries. And, and I, by the way, I don't want to say, yeah, I'm getting fries. Then you think, okay, that's fries for the table. No, it's not. No, motherfucker, it's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not Tony Soprano. I didn't order for the table. No. This is a side of fries with my meal. I'm getting fries. You'll have none. <laughs> yeah. And you can't do that, especially when you're married, you can. But when you're on a date, you can't. I, I still date. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can't give that look of keep your fucking hands off my food. Yeah. 
When you're, when, yeah, when you get married, you're allowed to get a little bitchy. And you can say, like, yeah, whatever you want. Just get whatever, whatever you want. Just order it. Yeah, I'll get two of everything. I don't care. Right. Don't even f take two bites and throw it on the floor. I don't care. Right. Can I taste your soda? No, but you can order one. That's fine. Oh, don't taste my soda. Like, someone took a sip of a beverage one time, and there was, like, a lipstick stain on my glass. Uh. But I'm like, I don't care because that, that mouth was on my dick not much longer after. Right, and yours on theirs. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was a she was a lady. <laughs> Damn it. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> For Pete's sake. <laughs> but then you're drinking the water and you just see the lipstick. I turned it around. I couldn't. Because it reminded that. my mother when I was a kid. Like I used to hate when my mother would blow on my 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 like my drink or my soup. Cause then your mom's possible spittle is in your you know your mom blowing? Like, don't put your fucking lung air on my food. Yeah. Yuck! Yeah. It's gross. <laughs> Let me cool it down for you, little Jimmy. With what? Your 92 degree fucking... How, how, what's the body temperature? 96? 98.6 degrees. Oh, there you go. 92. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> There's a fucking dead person blowing on my food. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. Travis and I grew up with that Winter Fresh commercial, so everybody knows exactly. It's 98.6 degrees inside your mouth. You never saw it? Winter Fresh gum. And fucking hit the bricks. You don't like it? No, nothing t says a person has bad breath like when they always chew winter fresh gum. Why do you say that? Because they think it masks it and it doesn't. It doesn't? No. Oh. It's a sickly sweet smell. You think they need a stronger Altoid or something it's like that? It's a weird thing. I hate wintergreen. Like, I'll take once in a while, I'll have a, like, a little piece of gum, but after a minute, I'm done with it. It's a terrible flavor. Stop with fucking wintergreen. I knew a girl one time, her breath was so fucking bad right. that, like, it stunk through the wintergreen. Oh. Do you know how bad your breath has to be to smell through wintergreen? So you're just smelling stale wintergreen and it bad was, breath? It was awful. Ugh. It was awful. Just bad breath masked with a layer of stale wintergreen? Yeah. It was, I felt like a, a coroner, but I had taken wintergreen and rubbed it under my nose. Like, you know how they rub Vicks Vapor rub under sure. their nose to get the smell of the body off their face? And it never really takes the smell away. Vicks might work, but wintergreen doesn't. <laughs> so fuck wintergreen. It really uh, bugs me. You know why people chew, like, winter fresh and wintergreen gum? They want to have a little treat because it's a nice, it's a it's a sweet treat. It's it nice. Is, it is, but like I it, chew it's Orbit. Tasty. Orbit's a nice flavor, but it's understated. It's a mellow vibe. That's like you though. What? Just having a mellow vibe. Yeah, I like a nice piece of Orbit, but it's more of the addiction because I quit smoking. Uh -huh. I got to keep after eating. I got to just keep fucking oral fixation. Yeah, man. That's just yeah. It's that's good for any girl. <laughs> that's I right there. Though. I'm right in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet. Uh, speaking of controversies, uh, actually. Let me put you on hold and talk to John in Miami. What's up, John? Hang on. Hello? Click it. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Yeah, wasn't Christie used on the campaign trail to help Donald look svelte against the crowd? Oh, you think so? Donald realized he was gaining some weight in the hips, and he was like, let me get Chris Christie to stand behind comparison. me. Yeah. Okay. Because if Chris Christie stands behind me, you're going to be able to see his hips behind mine. You know, he's wider than Donald is, which is exactly. a lot, because I think it Ted Cruz... Marco Rubio, all those guys, those guys are disappearing behind Donald. Ben Carson, you're not going to be able to see him right. behind but, Donald Trump. Well, it was a bad move that he had to wear the same color outfit. I mean, he always told Christy to wear an opposite color outfit. They <laughs> don't think I'm one big fat guy. Hey, wear the bright red suit today. Yeah, we're, we're beige. <laughs> I'm wearing dark gray. Can you imagine you remember Chris Christie showing up in one of those shitty beige suits? <laughs> I would love that. Or a shiny silver, like, shark skin suit. Oh, yeah. You remember the movie, was it Fat People with Dom DeLuise? Fat people. Um, that, I don't remember. There's a great scene where they're talking about mixing these different foods together. They're, he's trying to get off of eating. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you can find that and play it, it, it sounds like something that... Fatso. Fatso that, yeah, that Trump and Christy talking together, eating different foods. I think you should play it. It would be great. I remember, the, um, I remember when I was a kid, I think it was the movie channel... Or she was one of those movie channels at home, but they were the, the Fatso was on. Yeah, so we got HBO in like 1980. We got cable in like around 80. And I remember Dom DeLuise in Fatso. You remember these weird promos for movies? Doesn't that seem terribly insensitive and somewhat triggering? Why would no. they call it that? He was fat. Oh, <laughs> okay. That All right. I didn't, yeah. No. Okay. That does make sense actually when you put it into that context. Let me go to Shane in Indiana because speaking of. Uh, controversies and people fighting. Chris Christie and Donald Trump is not the only controversy that is abound. What's going on, Shane? Before we get to this missing chromosome mongoloid, Sammy, yeah. have you not noticed that James Ellsworth looks just like Chippa? 
There is a wrestler. Well, that's because he doesn't have a chin, and neither does Jim. I do so. Chip doesn't. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. <laughs> Go on, Shane. Go on, Shane. All right. Now, to this fucking douchebag on the Bennington show, he's kind of talking pretty reckless about you guys, and especially the tech master. Yeah, uh, the Bennington intern that wants to challenge Travis in a male pattern baldness, shave the head, oh. Seinfeld trivia contest, is going on the air and talking shit about Travis as if Travis hasn't been here for as long as Travis has been here. He's going on and he's talking shit and he's acting like Travis is going to be very easy to beat. And he's really, honestly, he's not taking Travis seriously at all. And he's coming uh, uh, to me. It's disrespectful. And he's coming across a bit like a horse's ass and, and is a guy who could probably use a humbling. Um, exactly. So basically, he's talking about a man who has become something of an institution. Yeah. In yes. this industry. Yes. Um, and I say, uh, I say we uh, up the stakes, and not only do we shave the head, but we throw the mothers in. That way, when Travis wipes the floor with this douchebag, he fucking he'll fuck whatever his name is, mother, like the piece of white trash she is. Okay, I don't. I, oh, sorry, sir. I think you're really panicking. Now, here's the thing: <laughs> even if the guy knows more about Seinfeld than Travis, right. Who cares? Right. How dare you open your mouth? Yeah, he's really excited about this. And you, say any, are you worried about him? No. <laughs> you're not, are you? No. It's really, it's really, it shouldn't be a difficult challenge. I don't it's think. Okay. Fine. Yeah. I wouldn't care if someone knew more about his show than me. Like, right. I, would, I wouldn't do a wire off. Right. Who was that? Oh, you good? You knew that? I didn't. Right. Go fuck yeah. yourself. Some people just have so little. Going on, yeah. that like they they need to elevate themselves. And he's a very odd looking guy. Isn't I don't know. He? I don't I've know. Ever seen him? It's the guy who comes in here. He cakes his hair down with gel. He's very very weird looking. How about this? Here's a little trivia contest. <laughs> who's who's uh, had more back and forth fun with Anthony about Seinfeld? This intern who nobody knows, right? Or fucking Teft in a box? Teft in a <laughs> box is the answer. <laughs> you bet he has. <laughs> It's hundred percent right. Every time Anthony would start telling a story that I believed, and I hear dummy laughing in there, I'm like, "Oh no, <laughs> I'm being yeah, you I'm being a hundred percent. I'm being had." <laughs> Did you ever miss one of one of Anthony Seinfeld references? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I no. didn't think so either. No, the answer would be no. <laughs> what is that? It's music from Seinfeld. Oh. That's what the sound. Yep. Oh, I, I, I guess. But you know what? I'm not the one in the contest. Travis, you knew that. Yeah, of course. Okay, that's yeah, what it I sounded thought. exactly like the song. Do you want to? Do you want to bounce around some Seinfeld trivia? No, I'll just try to, one just to test Travis. Or? Sure, I think Jim should do it. No, right. because I don't really know as much about the show. I don't think. Uh huh. Do you have any questions or anything? Um, sure. Because <laughs> I'm pretty good at it, and I can probably tell whether Travis is uh, right or wrong. What team uh -huh. did George work for? That's actually <laughs> great. That's great. That's a that's a solid question, Travis. The Yankees. I don't know if that's true. Yes. Oh, it is? Okay. okay, all right. Yes, it is Now, true. <laughs> did they have an episode about A, ISIS, uh -huh. B, masturbation? Okay, or... Oh, just A or B? Just there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, <laughs> ISIS was generally formed in what year? Well, look at look. I'd love to know. Yeah, if you could look up what year ISIS was, was, was formed. Don't help them. Yeah, you know, like, I don't know for sure... Which answer is correct? But I'm going to guess B, just because I don't think ISIS was around 20 years ago. Okay. okay. Well, ISIS was formed in 1999. When did Seinfeld go off the air? Sometime around then. Yeah. So. Yeah. So probably still. Oh. Okay. How about this one? Yeah. Couldn't be ISIS. Then. All right. That's probably I'm gonna right. I'm going to stick then. with B, but it could be A. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're not 100. 100 percent. No. There's a very famous episode. Oh. Where Elaine A dances. <laughs> right. B. Frisbee's her hat. <laughs> B sounds like more fun. And we're just going with the A and B options as far as multiple <laughs> yeah. choice goes. C drove a car. All right, well, then A and C. Okay. A, oh, she did drive a car. Okay. Oh, trick question there. You knew. Yeah, she's a terrible driver. She got Jerry sick. Yes. Who knew oh. that? I didn't know that. Um, I had no idea. How about this? <laughs> Who... Was the famous George Costanza that curious Costanza <laughs> worked for, and was he played by Larry David? Oh, um, George Papard. That's it. Yes, <laughs> yes, correct, correct. 
<laughs> Travis, you're looking actually really good at, for this. Well, taking a weird turn. I got a really good one. Okay, all right. Ask the question. Did Jerry once date a girl yeah. that had A, <laughs> big hands, B, a giant cunt? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I haven't seen every episode, so I can't answer that. That's actually one of the ones that the censors wouldn't let them do. Oh, oh. that's the lost episode, the <laughs> yeah. so George's was, big cunt girlfriend episode. <laughs> oh, was George a date? Oh, I, I don't remember. I don't know. None of them were making it up. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like you're going to be good, though. I mean, if these are the levels of questions that we're going to be asked. I am going to put a request into Bennington, based on how we've practiced, that please, all questions need to be A, B, multiple choice. <laughs> Just A, B, though. Right, right, right. Two option, multiple choice. Or A through L. <laughs> okay, well, that seems a little, <laughs> a little bit sillier than just A or B. Do you think Travis can win? Yeah, I mean, I don't know as much about it as he does, but... <laughs> I know he knows a lot. Do, does Travis know Seinfeld the way you know wrestling? I don't know. Well, you know what? The last time there was a trivia contest and somebody from this camp went on there, I was challenged to wrestling trivia three times on, on the Bennington show when it was Ron and Fez. I mopped the floor with them. I won all three times, and I did it handedly. Handily? Handedly? Handily. Hand, handedly. Hand, which one is handily. it? Handily. Handedly. No. Uh, yeah. I did it very well. Is the thing I did very oh, good. Handedly, is handedly. Right. look at who's the smart one here. Check that's handily. A Check handily. H a n d i l y. Oh, could it be that we're all right? Wouldn't that be fun? No. Yes, skillfully. Oh, we're all right. Dexterously. Oh, how oh. great. Oh, Dog. Kevin. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, dexterously. Oh, <laughs> yuck. Speaking of that, Kevin in Philadelphia has higher prints in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Two front paws still pulling him forward. <laughs> Confused. Why is, why is my of, stomach leaking out of my asshole? Easy. <laughs> speaking of that dog, speaking of that dog, if Sorry. Travis loses the contest against the Bennington show, mm -hmm. that piece of shit dog should be brutally raped and murdered on Facebook Live. No, there's no need to do that. How about this? If Travis loses, let's keep it simple. Yeah. We put an M80 in Dexter's asshole. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> and then he doesn't necessarily die. He might. <laughs> He might, but we'll light it and just see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Travis, bet. Because as the fizz was happening, the dog would just look up at Travis so frightened. Like, <laughs> am I involved in this? Yeah, why are you doing this? You think there's a toy around? <laughs> Can we shake on that, Travis, and call that a gentleman's no, bet? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> That's not a gentleman's no, bet. not even a gentleman's bet. No. Oh. oh. No, it's my dog. Well, it will be uh, if you win. I mean, now you're. <laughs> like if not, it'll dog. be stir fry. Loser, uh, loser loses dog. Lo loser blows up dog's asshole. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then if if the if you win, you get to blow up the dog's asshole. But if the Bennington intern wins, he blows up the dog's asshole. Sounds like lose lose to me. Not really. Do the dog and the cat like each other? They love each other. Oh, they're just playing? Yeah. How great would it be if the cat just bit out the dog's jugular one or day? Scratch <laughs> just, just, just bit his entire throat out of his neck. It's uncontrollable blood just squirting out. I thought out. they were playing! I thought they were playing! You can tell the cat's not mad, though, because his ears aren't back. No. No, they love each other. I would love if that tail puffed up and those ears went back out of nowhere. They do this every day. What do they do? They just play. If the, if the cat she really... Tries to eat, she tries to bite his, his neck, and he just tries to be an idiot. If the cat bit your dog's throat out, would you get rid of the cat or just keep it? Because then you'd only have the one pet. I'll probably keep it. Yeah, <laughs> I think. Oh, look, is he? Look, it's so cute. He's lick, lick, licking the cat, and the cat's like petting his head. You like that? God damn it, that's a cute video. Yeah. Ah. Nothing a fire couldn't fix. Yeah, that's L right. Listen, listen to it sounds just fine. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 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 he'd be he'd be gripping on to his life. He'd be trying to take his last breaths while his throat bled out, and he would sound exactly the same. Just yeah, you'd it would never know. It'd probably sick. be really quick. Yeah, you'd never know. No, I'd be like, oh, he's breathing. He's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was a cute video. He lives his life that French bulldog, as if he's taking his last breaths every day. <laughs> like yes. that's just his life. Every you know the when we take a breath, how it just comes across naturally. Imagine if every single one was a furious effort. Like, you have to think about it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a little bit much. He's like, oh, better put this bone in my mouth before I go to sleep or I'll be dead. I'll just suffocate. I've said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would explain a lot. Two different bones. Yeah. No, no, I mean like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Do we know when the trivia contest is going to happen? I have no idea. I think uh, we should do it before Thanksgiving, right? Maybe the Tuesday before? 
in like two days or three days? Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying uh, listening to this guy run his mouth. He's a fucking idiot, isn't he? <laughs> yes. He's just a, he's a fucking loser. He really he's he's a, he's yes, a putz. Who the intern? Yeah. He's just in there thinking, not realizing that he's way, way in over his head, regardless of what happens. And he's going to walk around with male pattern baldness, which is fun. Yeah, I've never taken anything as seriously as he seems to take this. No, no. Which is a shame for us, but still, still. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he seems like one of those guys who has something to prove, but nobody's asking him to prove it. Right. Like, you shut know? the fuck up. Nobody cares. No one's hey. interested in what he wants to prove. No, right. All right, cool. You do Seinfeld tours with your friends who probably don't want to be there. Cool. <laughs> you got Seinfeld tours? Yeah, that's Ugh. what he said yesterday. He brings his friends around to, like, places in New York. What's he from out of town? Who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. Like, doesn't he live here? Yeah. So why the fuck is he doing that for? <laughs> probably when his friends come in. Yeah. Like if they zip in from somewhere else, they'll probably go, hey, let's no, go. No, 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 this will be cool. You'll see the building. That's boring. I wouldn't do want to do that if my friend came to visit me. I would... Jerry wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Let me show. Hey, remember the restaurant? Does that big neon sign look familiar? Yeah, I've seen 150,000 pictures of it. It's fine. Elaine got Jerry Carsick driving. Yeah. That's funny. You like that? Yeah. I, I should watch that show, man. Because when it was on, it's when I started doing stand up in the 90s. So I was always out doing gigs. I just didn't. It was on Thursdays. I'll tell you, it but has it, its, its moments. So, so I, I, the, the ones I've seen were really great. But I mean, I just, you know, I should actually commit to watching that. You'd be moderately successful. I just don't like the music. <laughs> boom, ba -dum, boom, boom. That's the only thing I don't like. I mean, the, 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 the one I saw, like the, the and even the, the fucking Larry David, the Curb. I went to a Curb premiere once, and they showed two episodes, like the Palestinian chicken and the football, oh, with the Bill hilarious. Buckner one. Baseball. That chicken episode's so good. The story ability this guy has to create a great story, and yeah. oh my god, it, that's really hard to do, and he just does it effortlessly, over and over, <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, he's so he's so brilliant. You'd be really lousy at the trivia contest, um, with certain things, with Seinfeld. Yeah, well, Seinfeld. Yeah, it'd be terrible. Sure, I haven't seen them. It's it'd not be fair. terrible. Sure. You How about will... Jerry gets the Jim Norton trivia? Exactly. That's... <laughs> 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 there is something to this, uh, Travis, though. They are taking it seriously enough that it's, it is as if you're fighting for the honor of this show. He's so loud. I know, yes. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, he is back there. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a vomit sound. Throwing up. Right. <laughs> right soundboard. Yeah. Yeah. I want a vomit sound. Every time he walks in. I am much more confident that Travis is representing us uh, on another show than, like, Sick Baby. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah. You know, if Sick Baby was the representative, I'd be like, we're up Shit's Creek. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they would just show him different colors and he'd throw up on the table. Yeah. <laughs> Light I, sensitive. If I found out Sick Baby was fighting for us, I'd already be saying, guys, just remember, you know, we're a new show. Yeah. Bennington has been around for a while. <laughs> we're just kind of starting to see what works for us. Travis, I feel like he could win against the fucking weirdo intern. No, I'm sure I could. I think so. I wouldn't even care if Travis lost. You wouldn't? No. I wouldn't you, care either. You just laugh at him for having a bad haircut? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, what's the contest, though? I, I mean, it's practically like that anyway. What does the loser get? Well, that's how stupid this intern is. He agreed to a bet where the loser, the intern has a full head of hair. The loser of the bet has to shave male pattern baldness into their head. Who cares? It grows back. Plus, yeah. Travis is already, like, halfway there. Travis? He's got hair like Charlie Brown. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah, like... Doesn't matter. That's... That's what I told Travis. I was like, you want to do this contest? And he's like, I mean, I, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess. But what does he want to do? And I go, he wants to do male pattern baldness. And Travis was like, I already had that. And I was like, so it's easy. And he goes, yeah, I'll do that. Who cares? For sure. What difference does it make? If I lose, I lose. If he loses, I think it'll ruin his life. Right. Which is motivation. Because I don't yeah. think he's got anything going on. What's he look like? I don't I even know. what he, no Does idea. he have a full head of hair? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got a full head of hair, and really, it seems like Seinfeld trivia is the only thing he takes pride in. <laughs> so, he's got a lot to lose. So sad. His beauty and his pride, both on the line. Yes. Like, whereas Travis, a lot of people don't know this, is a broken person. Yes, yes. I have neither of those things. He doesn't have that stuff. Like, there is nothing that you could put on the line. Like, he would just be like, you know what, I'll probably just come in and do my job and then go home. Like, that's, yeah. that's Travis in a nutshell. I like Seinfeld and I make references. That's it. Yep. You like to go home and escape this nonsense by putting on your favorite television program. Yep. It's and a leisurely activity that gives you amusement. It's not a source of pride. But I'll tell you this. The fact that Travis is a broken man is going to work <laughs> in his benefit. Because this guy, who has like pride and hair and all this stuff, he doesn't have to go into this world of escapism with the frequency that Travis does. 
Travis needs to every single day either have some video games or some Seinfeld or something that takes him out of this misery. See, I don't know. See, Travis has a fuller life. Travis has a wife and a kid. Yeah, but he's got that shitty dog. dog. Understandable. I mean, but he likes it. And that cat. I mean, obviously, I don't care for either one of them, but he yeah. cares for both. <laughs> so he has other things. Seinfeld's a fun source of entertainment. But he needs the escape. Everybody he does, escape. but the other guy looks at it as a part of his self. His, his, he wraps his own identity in it because he brings people in to watch. Oh, look at the Seinfeld. Look, this is where Jerry dropped the rapper or whatever it is that happened. <laughs> yeah. Like Travis doesn't wrap his identity up in that. This guy is a source of pride for him. Like he'll, he'll, he tries to engage people in Seinfeld things. So people can go, ooh, you know the show. Right. But, but do you, you think anybody's ever, ever that? done that? <laughs> no. They're probably like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, cool. We need to stop hanging out. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, cool. That's an interesting tidbit. I'm not going to come back here. Let's have a mash off. <laughs> you want to do a mash off? Yeah. You think you'd be good in mash trivia? I don't know. I'd be terrible in mash trivia. Would you? Yeah, I don't want that show. It's old. It is. I don't have time for it. How I'm excited, you born? though. Mm -hmm. uh, 83. How about you, Sarah? Uh, Travis? 81. So you were two years old when mash ended. That was my dad's favorite show. Yeah? Yeah. Go ahead. Think of something. What? I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that helicopter flying away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mash, mommy always sounded Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mash is a weird one. Like, it was one of those shows, because it was always on when there was rain delays. Yeah. Like, for the for the Yankees or whatever, or the Mets. You said the Mash is what they would just kind of put on. So, and there was three channels. It was fucking always on television, mm -hmm. and there weren't many places to go. So, you just kind of grew up watching, like, that and whatever else might be on. Yeah. I watched wrestling in different strokes. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Let's go to I Chris. enjoyed both. Wrestling in different strokes? Yeah. Let's go to Chris the teacher. What's up, Chris? Morning, guys. Hello. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy, that curb. Uh, that oh boy, Chris, your phone dropped out. Chris, your phone is dropping out. Oh no! Oh shit! You're in. We got you. Am I gonna get made fun of? Oh god, I'm gonna make fun of. We're right no, here. your uh, phone was dropping out. That curb episode, Bobby Kelly was in it that you were talking about, Jimmy. Yeah, that's right. What is Bobby doing that? He's a fan, right? He goes fuck. He goes fuck you, Buckner, like right on the street. Uh, oh, right. Mm. So what else is going uh, on? I'm fuck. No, he's I'm right. I remember that. Yeah. I forgot Bobby was in there. He hung up. Chris got scared and hung Why? up. Cause he Because it wasn't like a big reaction. It was just like an acknowledgement. Like, yeah, I remember that. But he was correct. I, I, I had forgotten Bob was in there. But he was really hoping that it would start a conversation. And well, that he'd be a part of this it. thing. It wasn't anywhere. Is Bobby in the hospital? I saw it like, on Instagram or something. Or He was very sick. Yeah, he was puking. What's wrong with him? He said round four. I don't know what that meant. I saw it on Instagram. It looked like a doctor's office. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, I assumed it was just a doctor's office. I think he said he's fine. Yeah, uh, oh, I thought he said. I saw that. I thought it was a dentist. He said, "Yeah, he said heading into week four. So I, I, don't know I, I thought that was a dentist's office. I don't know what that means. I guess it could be, but it looks like scrubs, not one of those napkin things. Well, by the way, on this screen it does, but when you just look on a little phone. By the way, greatest news ever yesterday. I get a text after the show. My dentist's mother, very ill, fell very very sick. I was so happy. Cancel the appointment. Oh, no. I didn't have to get my fake cavities drilled yesterday. It was perfect. <laughs> perfect. Speaking of happy people, Corey Feldman. Yes, engaged. He is engaged. Corey Feldman, after all these crazy years, has finally found love. He wants to marry one of his angels. Uh, it says, uh, while so many people are set on moving to Canada after the election, uh, crashed its immigration website. Corey Feldman's better half was concerned about being deported. The star of the 80s, uh, the 80s star popped the question to his main angel, Courtney Ann, after four years telling people she's Canadian and with Trump coming in, we didn't want to risk being separated by new immigration laws. She's hot. Yeah, she's hot, but Corey Feldman is announcing to the newspaper, hey, we're in love. Also, we're doing it for the green card. Yeah, but you're allowed to. And if you, you what? No, no, you're not. No, no, no. <laughs> Meaning, if you're dating someone four years and you're like, look, 
I love this girl. I'm afraid my girlfriend's going to be asked to leave. Then what the fuck are they going to do? You just can't, you can't do it like, I have no relationship with this person, so they're coming over and just, she already lives here. I think, I think that the strategy would be to just say the first part. Why would you say the second part? Maybe it was a little too, uh, too much, but if you just I, say, no problem at all. If you just say the first part, we're in love, then you can get married. But if you say the second part, we're in love, and we weren't going to get married, but we got to have the green card. Yeah, we don't trust Trump. It doesn't matter. He's not under oath saying this. He's fine. I guarantee he's fine saying this. Travis, you married an international woman. I did. That's right, for that reason. <laughs> what are they going to throw her out? Do you get a kid and a dog? Oh, it'd be so funny if they made her go, and, and they, or they let her stay and they threw the animals out. Oh, yeah. we got to deport somebody. <laughs> she can stay, the kid can stay, but the fucking animals got to go to Montreal. That'd be horrible for both of us. <laughs> Do you no. think that Corey made a mistake here? Yeah, it's a stupid thing to say. It is. Did you get married say. originally? Was it so she could... I mean, you were in love, but did you go, she was like, I want to be able to see you all the time, or was that part of it? Well, I mean, it was a, it was a decision that, you know, like, well, yeah, we're, we're going to get married, and... I'm not going to live up there, right? Because my life is here. My career is. It's here. fucking Canada. Let's be honest. Yeah, you already got. You're you, you're allowed in America. Why would you move to Canada? So when the decision, you know, was, was made about where we were going to live, then. Oh yeah. yeah. How long yeah. you together before you decided? Mm, a year and a half. And you, have, you, have, do you are you now a Canadian citizen? No, that's not how it works. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, nope. she's dual. You don't get. She's not dual. No, you have to take the citizenship test. She's just a legal. Alien. You don't She's get same Z's if you get married? No. Oh, so wait sucks. a minute. How long does she... You've been married for a long time. Yeah, almost 10 years. So what does she have to do? Why doesn't she do it or it doesn't matter? Because uh, all it... Uh, there's so little benefit to it. Oh, she's a legal alien. Yeah. Oh, because you have uh, the kid, too. So, oh, yeah, they're not going to throw her well, out. Well, no, because she got she's her married. Card. Yeah, yeah she got But I mean, like, card. if you guys got divorced, they wouldn't ask her to leave. No, she would be allowed to stay. Because of her daughter? Yeah, be okay. because, yes, because now she's, she's a legal resident who has been here that long. First, you get your two-year card. Right. And then you have to apply for your tenure card, and once you get your tenure card, it's just it's just renewing it every ten years. How you don't how have to go back for interviews? You don't have to do anything. Okay. How long is it? How hard is it to get a visa just to come visit the U.S.? It's not that hard. We've already been over this, yeah. haven't we? I don't know. I'm just that's no, you're you're talking about you're, the, the. You're allowed to visit and stay for three months, but then you have to return to your home country. Technically, yes. Okay. Yeah. You still trying to get the same friend here? <laughs> no. Different friend? Just asking for another buddy. <laughs> No, I'm okay. actually curious because people always say how hard it is to come here. Yeah, compared to other places, it's it's just like you know I have to go here or there for work. But did you see how carefully Travis said what he said? He was like, yeah, well, when we were getting married, we had to figure out where to live, and I already lived here. He's yeah. not saying it wasn't like she had nowhere to go. So I was like, okay, come, right. let's get married. And I'm assuming if Travis had been like. Well, yeah, I mean, we're in a relationship and we love each other. Plus, I don't want her to get deported. They'd be like, that's not, you can't do that. You can say this, you can. No, when you go to your interview, you can't say, well, we also, uh, you know. It's mainly because, you know, <laughs> Trump, he might deport her. So we're going to lock this down now. Yeah, Technically, We've, they'll have no issue. No, only because you've been together for four years. You've already proven that you're. Yeah, you just have to establish that it's a legitimate relationship. She's probably here on a 10-year card. No, then. Well, maybe, it, maybe no, she because is, if, if she's worried about getting deported, then she's got nothing to worry about. Maybe they're just talking shit because of this whole people get caught up in the whole election. I think Corey thing. Feldman's just being an idiot. You yeah, think so? Yeah. You think that they're knocking on a, uh, the door of a judge and saying like, "Yeah, we heard there was a loophole yeah, for he, immigration." He's uh, like, uh, we'd uh, like you know to... what's in the news? Immigration. <laughs> yeah. Let I'd me like, get myself back in there. I'd like to be a part of that. He also wants to get one of his angels to get a little press for her. The last time one of Corey's angels was in the news, it was the woman leaving the voicemail on his phone. <laughs> or him leaving the voicemail on the woman's phone saying, you gotta be fucking kidding me, you don't want to be an angel anymore. He was, yeah, was pissed. Good. He was yeah. pissed. He was not happy. No. He's probably like, look, you could have been married. I love that Corey Feldman is having a resurgence. Yeah, I mean, look, he seems like a good enough egg. He's not a terrible, bad guy. He's not a nasty guy. No. He gets mocked a lot, though. He does, because he does cheesy things. It's like... You know, it's like <clears throat> dressing like Michael Jackson. Do you, how do you not see that that looks a little cheesy? It's cool. I don't even mind the song. It's not the song what? I have the issue with. The song is not the problem. It was the performance of it I thought was bad. But the Wait, song is okay. You're talking about the second song? Yeah, I didn't. It, look, it's not my favorite, but it's like I, it, it's, I wouldn't have registered it as, as something for me to make fun of. I would have been like, all right, it's just a song. Yeah, let me find the song because I think that that's way off. Yeah, but you also yeah. don't like Rick Ashley's new song, <laughs> and Adrian and I both think you're a queer. <laughs> <laughs> And what was Kevin's favorite song? Ascension Millennium. Yeah, you like that one? Yeah, you like Ascension Millennium where he's in his house? Ascension Millennium. I'll be honest, I, I feel the follow-up hit is better. 
You do. I do. You think Corey was happy to hear Ascension Millennium playing for him at Kevin Undergaro's birthday Maybe. party? <laughs> he didn't sing along. Well, he's probably embarrassed. I he mean, was. I wouldn't tell my jokes along with people. You wouldn't? No. The that one looks like Hitler on your shirt, by the way. Yeah. Travis's shirt looks like Hitler. People said the same thing to him yesterday when he was wearing his Walt Disney shirt. Like, sh you think all my shirts look like Hitler? No, um, a lot, most people do. They do that. That that's Hitler hair. And you know what it is? Because there's a mouth on your shirt, but it looks like a little mustache over lips. The, the top they're showing a choking victim, and and the yeah, it's a thing that's in like every restaurant. Yeah, yeah, but it looks like Hitler. It looks like it does look like Hitler with the mustache. It, it looks a lot like Hitler. It's just yeah. an open mouth. No, it that's looks like a mustache. Mouth. Yeah, he look, he's opening a TL Jews. Yeah, <laughs> hold on. The eyebrows are Hitler eyebrows for sure. Can you take a picture of fucking anti-Semite uh, Travis? <laughs> yeah, we'll post that up uh, all over social media. Jim and Sam show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and also uh, we podcast. Social media is blowing up. Though. I saw one of our videos had a fucking 200 views. It's like we, we have very successful videos. We are fucking trucking. You're focusing on the negative. <laughs> Play Take a Stand. You cannot sit there and tell me that the lyrics to the Corey Feldman hit, Take a Stand, are not make fun of a bull. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying the videos were like when his performance of it in that silly, shiny thing, throwing that hat off, looking like Michael Jackson hair. Like, what are you doing? You can love Michael Jackson, but that's not a cool look for a guy to emulate. You're right. It is not. No, it is not. Somehow. Yeah, this just sounds like one of those... It sounds like the inspirational song at the end of every high school, like uh, where, the, where the students in the bad area fucking learn to do math, and they win the math off. <laughs> yeah, because Michelle Pfeiffer was giving them candy bars. Yeah, or Tom Berenger, or whoever it is that played the fucking <laughs> teacher. Yeah. Here's she an M&M. This... You've, you've been convicted of rape four times. Here's an M&M. Do long division. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You've so. murdered somebody. Yeah, but she took us to an amusement park. Yeah, boy, white people love those fucking. Movies. That's Hollywood. They, they love heroes. the fucking white hero zips into the fucking darker neighborhood and rescues everyone and is recognized as a hero. Oh yeah, because it's her fantasy. Ugh. Yeah, Don't I'm be not white racist. People. I want to save them. Yeah, I'll help you. Yeah, I'll swoop down and help you. Condescending dick. Yeah, yeah. How about <laughs> you put a black teacher in there? I didn't mind Samuel. I didn't mind Coach Carter. Right. Okay. There's his hood. Fucking trippy crackers. <laughs> oh, he's getting rid of that shiny jacket, too. It's right the now. We need, see, we need peace, and he holds up the peace sign. You don't have to be so literal. It's so literal, but the lyrics are so literal. Like, this is not one of those motivational songs. This is like a 12-year-old yeah, heard one of those motivational songs and the wrote that coming out looking like Michael in the white shirt. That's awful. The Angels are good singers, though. They're yeah, fine. They're terrible, Jim. They're not fine. <laughs> His outfit. Here's what people don't like about Corey Feldman. What? Why they mock him. Because His, he's awful. No, his lack of self-awareness. Yes. It's weird. It's not that somebody writes something that isn't good, but no, nothing will make people hate your guts more than a lack of self-awareness. It's weird, man. Like, he doesn't understand how he looks. And that's the problem. It's not yeah. like people are like, wow, <clears throat> your song stinks. It's not about that. It's about you don't understand how bad you look right now. You don't see yourself like everyone else sees you. Because you know that you could have a conversation with that guy. And you could explain to him exactly what's going on in the most polite terms. Not insulting him. And none of it would sink in. None of it would sink in. He'd still act like he's a victim of it. Uh, what do you mean? I right. know, like, like when he's tweeting and talking about all the all the bullies, all the online bullies that are attacking him because his song, the first song, stunk. So he thinks going back on the Today Show and doing a second song is going to be the cure all. Yeah, and he's blaming the fact that like people are haters instead of saying like, look, we just don't like the song. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's his lack of self awareness that make people hate him so much, as opposed to the thing. And I'm watching this. And I'm like, with, with the uh, the outfit and stuff. It's like, how do you not know that that looks bad? It's it, and it, especially when it's so clear to everybody else, and everybody's telling him, and it's everywhere. No, you know what but the problem it's everybody is? else's Enough problem, people, not Corey's. Everybody else. The only people that tell him are strangers. That's the problem. Sometimes is like people who in his life are not telling him. And it's hard to tell people things. You know, it really is hard if you like somebody or if you know them. But no one is going up to him and going, "Like, look, this is not good." Because he only keeps the angels around him. He's not keeping real people around him. Right. Anybody He's got angels on his side. Yeah. The <laughs> oh man, good tune. No, it's not a good yes, tune. Yes, it is. I've got angels on my side. <laughs> 
is so bad. This is like, Travis knows. He knows. He's laughing. He gets gets it. it. This is like early 90s Euro pop. You know what? Maybe, but it doesn't mean it was bad. Leave my thumbs up. I see your thumbs. thumbs up walk. This is not a good song. It is a good song. You're not a good person. Rick Astley did not. (laughs) Yes, I am. And Rick Astley did not have a follow-up hit. Guess what? No matter how angry it gets him, people are still Rick rolling. They're not angelic. He didn't care. He was a fun guy. I liked him a lot. Although, my favorite part of uh, interviewing Rick Astley was all the fans that were tweeting us videos after that that were making their own <laughs> Rick Roll videos, but they were ending with the hook to Angels on their side. That's funny. <laughs> I dis- Travis, this is a good song. I do like this song. It's yeah, not it's a good catchy, song. catchy, but this is the only time I ever listened to it. I'm- right. I know, I forget that it's around. I'm going to download it on the old new uh, 7 Plus. Hey. Oh, oh, shit, here we go. Oh, shit. Can you get it with Apple Music? I, I wouldn't know. I don't fuck with Apple Music. <laughs> Why not? Stop getting in my life, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking buzz off. <laughs> That's what I would say. I remember when I was a kid and I found buzz off. I was like 12 or 13. I thought that was such a cool thing to say. Uh-huh. I remember getting so mad at my mother. And I was like, buzz off! Oh, you thought you were just so much edge It there. was my mother's birthday yesterday. It was? Yes. What'd you do for her? Did you call I, her? I'm going to call her today. I fucked up. What do you mean you're going to... I'll tell you why. Because I ordered her something. What? I ordered her something. Can you call it... Okay, I should have called her yesterday. But I ordered something that's coming today, so I'm going to call her today. I told my sister I'm going to call her today. But the thing I wanted to order, I tried to get sent yesterday. It doesn't matter, you're the right. thing. You're right. I should have called her. You should call her. I will. I'll call her today. Well, she doesn't need to hear from you today. Yeah, she does. She'll be happy to hear from me. She could call her yesterday and be like, oh, and there still might be something coming in the mail for you. Yeah, I know. But she doesn't give a fuck what you buy her. She doesn't care what's coming in the mail. I know, but I just wanted to have a definitive, hey, it's coming today. I don't know. I just... <sighs> I hope she tells you to buzz off. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Mom. Buzz off, Jimmy. <laughs> My birthday was yesterday. That's right. I know who I'll talk to. <laughs> 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 yeah, at least if you make a phone call. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one phone call that Travis never stresses about. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. He wouldn't know which... which yeah, there's seven possible numbers. He doesn't know which ones they uh, are, though. I just want to give Travis Save a hug. my minutes. Yeah. Uh, Let me tell you something. Doesn't that make you want to hug Travis <laughs> from the back? <laughs> Arms what, on his chest, whispering fact, angels on my side in his little ear. <laughs> the fact that he he doesn't even know what area code to start with, <laughs> <laughs> or country code. Uh, is this 11? That's true. Do I put a plus one or I don't? I don't. I yeah, don't I gotta know. call my mom. I uh, call her today. Yeah, it's a terrible thing that you didn't call her. No, I want to see her. You can't see her. Thanksgiving, I probably see my family. Like I went out. My mom's birthday was last week. On Saturday, we all went out to dinner, the family. You're closer to your family, though. I love my family. But I great, called but her on her birthday still knowing, I mean, they You're, got just texted me and said it's your mom's birthday. Trust but, me, my dad and my sister texted me. You, so you knew. I did. I think my sister's is, is in, I know it's in April. I'm, my dad's, I remember, because it's 10 days after me. Mm-hmm. But I'm very bad with dates. Like I don't remember people's birthdays, anniversaries, ever. Do you know my birthday? No, but I can't wait till your death day. That <laughs> one I'll remember. Just... just I'm looking for a death joke. <laughs> I could well, it's the only one that just we, crammed it in. Yeah, there's no such thing as a death day. I was just I'll put, make an alarm, celebrate yeah. every year. <laughs> uh, Who are we looking at? John in Pennsylvania. Hey guys. Hey, I was just gonna say that uh, Corey Feldman is like America's uh, David Brent, the douchiness, and you compare it to like Equality Street stuff like that. You know what? The songs that David Brent does are not dissimilar from the songs that Corey Feldman. Does. The Gypsy song is actually better. It's the video. It's the little. Can things. I tell you something? Let me tell you something about Kevin Undergaro. How he loves Ascension Millennium. He also loves uh, that that Gypsy song, but like as a real song. Like, he's yeah. like, that's a fucking great song. He's not wrong. Yeah, he loves it. Uh, Jeff in Maryland. What's up, buddy? Hey, man. Uh, no one's talking about all the kids uh, leaving school whenever they want to, walking the freeways, tying up traffic. <laughs> you mean the protesters? Yeah. You know, it was so funny, because now a lot of the schools are protesting Donald Trump. And I was watching O'Reilly last night. Uh, after I got home from wrestling, I went to wrestling and then I went home and watched Bill O'Reilly. And I was watching him and he had like a student journalist from Notre Dame or some college that was protesting it and stuff. And Bill O'Reilly was like a salivating wolf. He was so happy to have this kid on that could obviously, he's a fucking college kid against a professional argue debater guy like Bill O'Reilly. And O'Reilly just fucking hammered this kid with joy 
hammered him. Well, the thing is, they don't. a lot of times the protesters don't know exactly what it is. And I've said this before, a lot of them, they've never really lost before. Like, to them, they grew up, well, how old are they? They say a lot of them are 21, so they're 13 when Obama gets elected. Mm-hmm. Hey, the good guy, they start paying more attention to politics, he gets reelected, he wins. And then this Trump, a lot of people can't believe Trump won, and if you're in that, if you're a millennial, and, and, and you think he's this terrible racist, and the, you can't comprehend this guy winning. That would have been like David Duke winning when I was like growing up. Like that, the you shock, that bad? the shock of it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my God, the guy was. Do you remember all the riots that they had when uh, Obama was elected? No, but again, dude, the difference is because it never happened. Well, I, well, I, I, I know, sir. I, I'm hearing you, but I'm saying the difference is that a lot of the people protesting Trump are younger, and a lot of the people who were mad about Obama were older, and older people handle things differently, and they handle things better. I'm not making an excuse, but I'm just saying that's but why it is what it is. Obama is not the shock to the system that Donald Trump is. Yeah, dude, he really isn't. I mean, no... he was more liberal than people want. First black president. But Trump really, Trump, did, you have to realize, Obama didn't alienate his own party. Trump alienated his own party for most of it. Yeah, and also the media convinced everybody that Trump is a racist, sexist, misogynist. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, that that's the, all the young people that are in college, they've been trained that that's the most evil thing ever, and the minute you hear that accusation, you need to fucking find yourself a safe space and duck and cover. But instead, also- of, instead of hiding from the atomic bomb, Right. And students used to be taught to duck and cover under a desk. Now they're taught when there's a nasty word, find a safe space and you'll be okay. Trump said, Trump brought a lot of this on himself by saying stupid shit. He is the one who made that statement about Muslims not coming in. And I know he's kind of amended it, but it's like a bunch of young people, like to them, that's everything. He said that. Mm-hmm. They're not making that up. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying he's going to do that, but he should he should amend these statements and talk to these people, and eventually it will stop. He's going to have to deal with it, and it's not a matter of winning and losing. You've already won the office, so he should start talking to them and going, look, I am your president. This is what we're going to do. Begin talking in a presidential way. That will help, and I'll tell you what else will help after the Electoral College votes in December. Once it's cemented, this will all end uh, come December what, or after the inauguration. Yeah. Yeah. The, this, is, this is a temporary thing, dude, but it is what it is. It's not that crazy. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with it. People don't like it. It ties up traffic. But look, in America, when you don't like something, you go out, you protest it. Dan in Detroit. Hey, guys. Good morning. Hi, Dan. Sam, you're absolutely wrong about Rick Ashley not having a follow-up hit. Uh, Together forever. What are you? Uh, no, no. He meant forever? after. He meant after Angels on My Side. Oh no! Did you not mean that? <laughs> None of them are follow-up hits. No, no. You're wrong. That he was a huge song. Did. He absolutely right. did. Together forever is a massive song. Same. It sounds exactly the same. It's the same as never going to give you up, right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I love that. I love it's got that. twenty. It's got a twenty-six yeah. millioni views. That's not how you would say that. It's how you say it to be hip and young. Jason Ellis is outside. So let's take, we have to take a break, right? Yeah, we're going to take a break, Ski. We're going to have Jason Ellis come in. Then we're going to have uh, Laura Jane Grace from Against Me. Against Me, who is, uh, uh, I guess, became, like, transitioned into a woman at, yes. like, like, in the career. In the middle of the career, yeah. And I mean, and, three, and, three years ago. Three years ago. And by the way, okay. people are going to think that this was my, I mean, I'm happy to interview Laura. Um, but uh, let's be honest, who pushed this booking? Fucking D bag who's Push been it. talking about this shit. D bag's been talking about this shit to me since I was on at nights every <laughs> single fucking day of my life. I'm so sick. By the way, after this one, I'm sure the interview is going to go well. I'm excited to talk to her. D bag's banned from booking guests after this. Well, we'll see if it goes well. If it goes well, then maybe we'll allow him to book more guests. It will. We'll see. I'm sure. I have no doubt. I'm very excited for her to come. You in. are. It'll I'm, be good. I've been a fan of her Dude, band she, for 20 years. Was it weird when she transitioned for you? No. Okay. She transitioned. Like she stopped transitioning halfway through and then restarted. Yeah. Like she's had a lot of psychological shit go on. No, she doing... hasn't altered her voice or anything. Like like the records sound the same. Okay. You know. So we'll get Jason Allison here, uh, Laura Jane Grace, and then also the Oh Hello Boys, uh, John Mulaney and Just Nick. John Cole. and Nick. They're both such fucking brilliant stand-ups. They really, really are funny great. guys, man. They really are really great. funny. Busy show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. Should have come back with Rick Astley, but whatever. I chose against me instead. Yeah. I've heard Rick Astley enough. Probably Jason Ellis it. is here. Yeah. What's going on, buddy? Oh, you know, just hanging out in uh, Times Square and getting Starbucks and room service, watching every movie they've ever made that's uh, available on the movie thing in the hotel room. And that's what you do. Going to fucking transgender uh, dance 
club. I went the other night. It was pretty intense. Was it good? You should have gone. Fuck, man. I should have fucking. You would have loved it. We would have. We would have killed Jimmy. We. I was killing until the point where they were having a transgender war over me. They were. Yeah, yeah. Because the first, as soon as I, I'm a friend with uh, Foxy. She's like a transgender porn star, but okay. she's, a, she's a real friend of mine, like uh -huh. has been for several years now. And she hit me up. She's like, you're in New York. I'm like, yeah, yeah. She's like, come to my uh, stripper thing. And I'm like, okay. And I saw the flyer on Instagram, and it looked like it was a strip club where transgender girls were going to be performing. So I was like, cool, I got nothing to do. And it was a sweet time slot, 5 to 9. PM? Yes. Which oh, is that's... That's usually a much later activity. Right, I, yeah. I can't hang. I, I mean, I'm a morning guy, so sure. I was like, if it's two and fuck off, if you're late at night. But, but you're I'm done like, at nine o'clock. Yeah, I was That's like, this perfect. is my, this is my, this is my zone. So, I went with her, and I go in there, and it's really tiny, like really tiny, and there's no, I thought there's no, there's not even like a stripper pole. It's just uh, a room with a DJ booth, a bar. And uh, one whole side of curtains for private dances, and there's probably about eight transgender girls and about ten dudes, and that's about as far as it went. That's the whole party. And as soon as I walked in, this one, and they're all pretty hot, man. Like there's there's a couple that maybe were not that hot, but I would say most of them. You, there's no way you'd even know. What was the purpose that of, the, of the party? Was it to sell drinks? Were they charging admission? Was it just an event? What an cute, naive question that was. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it's up to you. <laughs> it's funny because I walked in thinking the same thing for a second, and then they're like, hey, you give lap dance? You want a lap dance? I'm like, fuck yeah, I want a lap dance, because I told my chick I was going there, and she gave me the approval to do whatever I want. So That's great news. I was like, yeah, full, full you know, whole pass. Here we go. And uh, the first girl that comes up, she talks to my friend Foxy, Spanish, because they're both Spanish, and they're talking to each other. I'm like, what'd she say? She's like, she asked if I was, if you were my husband, and I was like, no. And she was like, well, let me get at him, and she gave him, she, so she's all over me. Like, you dance? I'm like, yeah, I'll take a dance. Next thing you know, she's fucking trying to bang me in there. Really? Oh, yeah. that's, that's against club regulations. I hope uh, yeah, you spoke that's... to the manager. <laughs> yeah, after I fucked her. <laughs> yeah, I, <did. laughs> yeah I, I would be scared, too, in any club. Have you, sex with anybody? You wouldn't. You, have you ever done it? Nah, I, with the I, rubber on, it's fine. I, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, just the idea of being <laughs> for Jim, rubbers aren't an option, though. Yeah, you exactly. Never fuck really? With the rubber on. I, I mean, I, if I have to, I oh mean, oh my, you, wait, you. Okay, I don't usually fuck. Okay. I, I don't usually fuck. So what I. But if you did, you would put a rubber on, right? Probably. Right. Yeah. yeah. You get this oh. insane. Yeah. Um. But no, I wouldn't do it in a club. Are you a hand job guy? Yeah, I just jerk off. I'm easy. I'm old school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would prefer that too, but, um, you know, I sort of, I don't know, you get me hard. I sort of, I, I, I had a hall pass. You're into it. And I, I got to do something with it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then I hung out with a, a Russian one that was really pretty. Or sorry, Czech Republican one, whatever. <laughs> Czech Republican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she uh, was obviously doing a lot of cocaine before she came over to me. And I'm still pretty newly sober. Not when it comes to cocaine. That's been a long time. But I definitely don't want to be around it. And she was snorting like... The drip, she was dripping the whole time while she was talking to me, and it was making me super anxious. I was like, man, I don't want your... F I could smell the coke on her face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you didn't want to be around it? No, and she, so I didn't want a dance with her, and she got really weird about it, because she was... At first, she was... She comes over, and she's like, you kill people, yes? I'm like, what? It's like, you kill people, you tattoo, you kill. And I'm like, I fucking love heart. I I, no, I don't kill anybody. What the... F and if I did, why the fuck are you into it? Yeah. Weird ass gangster bitch. Like, because she was obviously... Because she thought that the, the black heart on your face was like one of those murder teardrops. <laughs> she just thought that maybe I was like a drug dealer or somebody really dangerous and was into it because I'm pretty sure she had a pimp that was watching the whole time who was trying to, like, pimp this transgender lady out so that she would <laughs> fuck me and take a bunch of money and give him a cut of it or something. That's right. What I, that's what I thought. I don't think that anybody who has those tattoos killed anybody anymore. Like, don't the people with don't, black teardrop tattoos, don't they just kind of want to look like Lil Wayne or something? Like I don't nobody, fucking know. I don't... I, I just like tattoos. I never... You know what I mean? I'm not... I don't kill... What the fuck? You know what that means, right? I just Nothing. like pictures, man. Yeah. Everyone's taking me too serious. I want to get a tattoo. What kind of you tattoo? Should. I don't know. I know a guy that'll do a good job, so you won't have to get a shit one, because usually when you start the game, you've got to get a shit one first, so like, right. you don't know anybody, you know what I mean? So you put your foot in and you get fucked over. 
But if you go through me, I'd be like, this guy, you know what I mean? You where, do you wanna, where do you want to get it done? Um, I don't know. I should get something. Yeah, like, a, it, it, like what would be the theme of it? I don't know. I have no idea. What about a picture of you with your favorite celebrity? Because I know you like pictures that, with celebrities. I, I don't know if I can have that on my arm. No, but it'd be Maybe great on like back. On, on your back. If yeah, you like Steve-O. You and Ozzy together. <laughs> <Instead of> just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> make it more Ozzy, but still, you're there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm mean, actually making something really dramatic, like Ozzy with his hair blowing and he's carrying me on a beach. Yeah. <laughs> or make you like a baby, and you're, but it's your head and it's Ozzy like he's your father. You wait till the one day when like you're way too comfortable and you're like, Ozzy, I, I wasn't going to show you this, but you're going to like this. No, no. Check out what's on what my back. What the fuck is that? Yeah, don't, don't show him. Just get it. You don't want to yeah. freak the poor guy out. It's for you. It's just for you. It's something that you did for yourself. You don't really want a tattoo. No. Yeah, not that I'm against them. I'm just too indecisive. <laughs> right. I, I'm not. I, I would. It, my. I'm 48. It would look silly for me to get one at this age because I've never had them. You look so much better, man. I was. I went down a wormhole looking at you on YouTube. You were fucking fat. For thank a you. While. I was. Yeah. I was. A, I, I you sure, really look way better. Thank you, buddy. I, I feel better. You know, I, I showed someone a photo. You don't realize how bad it is until like you look at old. Like, yeah. Oh my you had like God. a fucking crazy fat neck. Yeah. Yeah. It was truly terrible. Looked like you just had like tonsillitis mm. surgery or some shit. <laughs> Everything was just puffy and swollen. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. <laughs> We have, uh, is our guest coming down the hall? Is that what it is? I think that, that, that Laura Jane well. Grace. Do you know Laura Jane? Mm, that sounds familiar. She sounds pretty famous. She's in the band Against Me. Oh! Yeah, she yeah I think she's going to come on my show. Oh, well, you get to interview her with us, too. Yeah, I'd prob this is more, I'd, I'd probably this is what's going to turn out to be the only time I talk to her. Yeah, oh, no, no, she was going to come on and then I... Laura. I was sick or something? I don't know. Oh. Well, she's here today. She's Good. coming in now. Well, here's my window. Yeah, yeah. Well, Snapchat it. Jump your jacket, Jimmy. Make oh. it count. Thank you. Make it count, Jason. This is it. Bring is her she in. coming in? She's single? Yeah. I don't know. Ask her. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. You guys don't mind if I hit her on your show, do you? No, that's no, what I no, want. No. <laughs> oh, then watch. Here we go. Think about Come on in. Right. Hey. Going, Good. How's it going? Hey. Sit down. Hello. Yeah. Laura Jane Grace coming in from Against Me. She's also got a new book out called Tranny Confessions of Punk Rock's Most Infamous Anarchist Sellout. Mouthful. Yeah, I know. Welcome. Do you get yeah, shit for yeah. saying tranny? Because so many, like, there's so many activists that get angry if you use the word, regardless of the intention. Oh, I, I mean, I hate the word. I don't like the word at all. Oh, you don't? No. Why would you call your book that? Uh, I mean, a lot of my book is about self hate and internalized transphobia. That's true. Um, so, you know, I mean, in that way, it's a fitting title. I'm yeah. Jason, by the way. Nice to meet you, Jason. I'm not supposed yeah, to be yeah. here. This is not my show. Cool. But, <laughs> cool. but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm he was invited. You were going to be on my show, but something happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I had to. Oh, no, I had to have a heart. A test on my heart. That's what it was. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I'm okay. This, I'm alive. I'm super fit and shit, but I had to do it to make sure because I'm super paranoid. I'm sure you can understand. Good. I've got issues just as well as you. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a competition. You know, you know that. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, if you like, I want you to know. I'm fucked up too. I, 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 don't be coming. I'm to just trying to like set the you feel. You know, we're even. You know, I'm super, are you single? <laughs> I am. Yes. Right. <laughs> I'm super into you. Right. On. Yeah. Thank so you, you know, okay. I like your style. I like your vibe. I like your head tattoo. I like your neck tattoo. Thank you. We should make out. I mean, not right now because it'd be awkward. But maybe later. <laughs> yeah. Off, right. off camera. We don't want to be YouTube sensations. Right. You right. wouldn't be. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Get pumped on your own shit, Jimmy. <laughs> How did I guess? I mean, this must be the question that everybody asks, but what kind of reception did you get from your fans? Because, I mean, they had, they had, against me, was a really established band. Um, with with what with coming out? Yeah, before or? you yeah. transition. That's so, a big jump because like Halford came out as gay, but that's a that's a different jump than right on. Yeah. yeah, I mean people were really supportive and people were really like surprised me. You know, like totally surprised me. I I actually like I felt like if I wouldn't have been up front though and come out and just like told people that it would have been different. You know, that if I had like started to exhibit like if I had started like wearing eyeliner or something like that, that people would have been like, oh, guy liner or some some something like that. You know, so I. I felt like I kind of had to come out and just say it, you know? So you, didn't you try at one point and then go like, I can't do it and then just restart? Mm, uh, well, I had a suicidal nervous breakdown um, about a year and a half after coming out um, and, and kind of bottomed out for a little while. But, was that yeah. because you thought it was a mistake? Like, oh, I'm not, I don't, I don't no, know it was if this just is the pressure, you know, right. really, it was like j just the pressure. And I had like an adverse reaction to the hormones that I was on. So mm -hmm. like I quit hormones cold turkey for a couple months. And when you quit hormones cold turkey, that really after, after being on them for like a year, it really affects you. Well, you were you taking know? pills, right? Uh, yeah, pills and then switch to injections and injections are a lot more even keeled. Because huh. you become a woman, which means you get all emotional like a woman. 
<laughs> Men are emotional too. Yeah, but they don't. Because they, I, I, I've had people on my podcast and my radio show. I had a uh, a transgender girl to guy, and when he got the shots, he got a beard, and he said he had to go through puberty, and he became Me too. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So he was said that he went through all these things that well, we we all did when we were like eleven or twelve yeah. or fifteen, whatever it comes. And so that means I assume that it's a reverse. I'm, I, I know a little bit about transgender. I'm, I'm, I was just at a club on Tuesday, super into them, super into <laughs> girls. That have, and I understand your pain because you were born a man. I do. Don't fucking look. You can laugh at me all you want. You got a book about it, not me. I just, I just like that Jason is really selling himself. What? As like Thank a you for understanding my pain. I do. <laughs> he does. He's I not bluffing. Under, I want to understand more of your pain, if you know what I mean. Read the book. I, I I don't read. I've got two books and I never There's read an any of them. Book. I just want to look at the pictures and I'm not seeing any of you naked and it's bumming me out. <laughs> That's all. I'm just flicking through here and I'm like, there's a lot of words here. It looks like you drank a lot and did some drugs though. I did, yes. That, yeah, doesn't, I, that yeah. doesn't help. I, I, so you started doing drugs when you were like 13 years old, right? Um, yeah, you know, at yeah, a pretty young age. I kind of like was like dead set on it, you know? Like, About doing it like it was something you... I was like, I'm going to get into drugs. I'm going to start smoking cigarettes. These are terrible, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to find drugs. Drugs, why know? did you why what made you do that when you're that um young I, I wanted the experience you know um i i guess that had a lot to do with it and then experience like and experimenting with the way that like um drugs affected dysphoria mm-hmm. you know like for me smoking weed really calms me and really like took away the panic um like doing coke or like took away the feelings of dysphoria just like numbed me i didn't care about anything all same with drinking um and you know it was it was south florida so like drugs were rampant it was either easier to find like cocaine and acid than it was to get someone to buy you alcohol you got married twice right yes so, uh-huh. and, to women so was it hard to like sleep with women or were you not into it or did you just do it because like well this no, is no i mean i you know that there's a difference between gender identity and sexual identity and i mean like i really like sex sex is great you know Oh, so do you, are you attracted yeah. to women now or men? I, I am. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Not dudes. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't have a shot. <laughs> That's yeah. He's, he's not well, asking. Coming on strong. It's really early. I've had two sips of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, drink some more coffee because here I come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Jason. <laughs> How that shit. <laughs> Did you? I guess I don't even understand. Like, because when I was thirteen, were you always just an explorative person? Like, that just wanted to experience everything i'm asking when i was 13 i hadn't tried a hamburger yet and you're doing fucking <laughs> cigarettes and blow and what are you talking about yeah no i did sam's I, a late bloomer though sam's a late, a late bloomer. Oh, what, what's so dangerous about a fucking hamburger i just I'm, didn't like different things i liked what i liked i know what i like <laughs> at 13 and that's what i do that's hmm. it yeah i don't you, need to look you around never drugs never Oh, you you missed that. It was it's pretty good. He's a little OCD, Sam. He's got a weird thing with tastes and textures. He's a weird dude. Just like this is what I like. You're this not a good ca- you're not a good case study for that because you you've done a lot of weird things that I'm, most people haven't done. I'm thinking on the opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah, what weird but it'd be stuff on the be spectrum. Done. Nothing weird. I don't do weird stuff. I like my things. Why oh, such a vag? Get out there. <laughs> Stick your finger in I'm something. Not, I, no, I like. The, I didn't mean like pussy or anything. I mean like get your you know I mean get your toe wet. Whatever it's. <laughs> <laughs> what is this for you? What is this for? Yeah. It's a feeling of disconnect, feeling of misalignment, you know, um, hmm. uh, feeling like what's in my head doesn't match up. You know, like I, you have your self image that you can think about, you know, like, oh, this must be the way I look. And every time I see a mirror, I'm like, it's like a, a feeling of disconnect. You know? And how do they know? Because there's all these people that say, well, it's only a mental thing. How do you know that it's not just a mental thing that needs to be fixed instead of saying this is really who well, I am? Well, gender is in your head. I mean, like a cliche example would be, okay, if you're a soldier and you go over to Iraq and you get your genitals blown off, are you still male? You know? Right. Right, so it's a it is like you would identify yourself as male regardless of if you had your 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 dick and balls left or not. So, I get that. So it's a psychological identity. Right. And uh, so when you realize, I guess it's not, you, you know, you're not walking around as a teenager being like, I should have been born a girl, or were you? I, well, I mean, like, you know, I didn't hear the word transgender until I was probably like 19 or 20. Right. And, you know, it was like pre-internet days where it's not like I, you know, I could go to the library and there was no books on it or anything like that. So, like, for a long time, I thought I was schizophrenic. I thought, like, there was, like twin souls inside me warring or something like that i just didn't understand it i didn't know what was wrong with me you know like i thought okay i'm i'm i guess i'm gay you know maybe i'm gay i don't know you know i just i didn't know 
Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, you know, those weird, confusing thoughts. (laughs) Me and Jim are pretty (laughs) fruity. Sorry, Jim, to throw you in. Oh, please, throw myself myself in in 1974. (laughs) So when you uh, write songs, would that help you with your writing? Like all this kind of crazy stuff you're thinking in your head makes you, you have to get it out, so. Yeah, and that's always what songwriting Did you allude to it in your songwriting where nobody knew? Yeah, I mean, at first it was like, you know, like alluding to it and like hiding things in metaphor. But then like, you know, by like our fourth record, I like, uh, there was a lyric on our fourth record that was, if I could have chosen, I would have been born a woman. And I remember like singing it in the studio and being like, does anyone think that's weird, that lyric? And everyone was like, no, it's cool, go with it. You know, and just no one, no one ever said anything. So it became like this like thing of, okay, like how much can I say? How can, far can I push it? Is anyone paying attention? Was there a point where somebody said, wait, wait a minute, you meant that for real? We thought that was just a lyric. <laughs> well, or, afterwards, you know, like, sure. You or know. when you come out where they like, yeah, we were listening to your lyrics. We, we kind of fucking gathered. I had like one or two friends afterwards who said like, oh yeah, I kind of gathered, but I was like, no, you fucking didn't. You, yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah, no, you didn't. <laughs> Did you ever, do you think that because of the, the way it is these days that it's a little more acceptable that you have done this and con- and committed to it? Or like, let's say you are, you're the same age you are 20 years ago. Would you have gone through what you're going through right now and, and become the woman that you are? Uh, you know what I mean? Because the times have changed and you're not going to be chastised as badly. I feel like people are way more acceptable of transgender and people being gay or bi or whatever it is. 20 years ago, like I'm bi, I came out just recently. I don't think 20 years ago I would have, st- I think I would have kept it to myself because right. I think I just would have been fired. I think I would have lost my job. Right. Well, I mean, you know, I think for most trans people that it becomes like not an option to not come out. So you, know? you knew you were going to. Right. And and for me, it was like, you know, consequences be damned. If this costs me like my whole entire fan base or whatever, you know, like it wasn't, it doesn't matter. You do you know, think like, it's because of your age as well? Like you think you got a little, like when you were younger, because you said you knew when you were little, do you think the older you, you got, you knew that it was like, this is the healthiest thing for me to do? Well, yes, but also like, I think that I probably would have come out at a lot younger of an age if I wouldn't have done what I did with my life as far as like when I was 20 years old I started touring playing like 200 plus shows a year for like 10 years you know signed to a major label like so there was like all these things that distract me along the way and like you know I came out at the end of a major label like contract and was just like you know just didn't know who I was anymore, you know, and I it was like coming to the realization of like, okay, if this is the way I felt when I was five, this is the way I felt when I was 10, 15, 20, right. like I'm always going to feel this way, you know, like I, I need to accept this and move the fuck on, you know. Did you ever like dress up when you were on the way? Because I read the, like, yeah, I think uh, Caitlin said that like years ago, I think you would just like, when it was still Bruce would dress up and go out. Did you ever dress up and like, oh, fuck, I'm going to get caught? Yeah, I mean, like, I, well, I lived in hotels, like, I lived in a hotel for, like, two years, and, and I mean, like, there was great anonymity in that, you know, and, but I had, like, systems where I was like, okay, I got my hotel key card, if this, like, demagnetizes for some reason, what do I do, okay, I'll hide a pair of spare clothes in my car outside so I could change, so I don't have to go to the front desk to get a new key, or, like, get a hotel room where I can crack a window to crawl back in through the window if I need, you know. Isn't it kind of rock and roll to be... In a dress, dresses a like I feel like if you're the singer of a band and I see you dress as a woman, I'm just like fuck yeah. I, I would I honestly wouldn't think, you know, he's trying to become transgender. I'd be like he's rocking out, right, right. But it, that's probably someone who's not transgender and who's just rocking out, you know, like as opposed to like again, like having a book called Chani where like I hated that about myself, you know, and I yeah. feared people knowing about that that about me because I didn't accept I it completely you know? relate i feel like you know a transgender but just admitting that i'm bi i still find it i'm okay with you guys because i've already done it i did it on sam's show like i admitted a lot of stuff on sam's show but i didn't there's still certain people that i well, they like so oh, you're uh bi and i'm like oh man you wouldn't do the it one room i don't want to talk about you it's said like you wouldn't do it, it on your show like you said, there was stuff I, that you would say on my show because it's in this room that you didn't want to do on your show for. I just didn't want to announce it. Yeah, I, I was. You questioned me. If you didn't question me, I wasn't going to fucking talk about it. Right. You heard me on Pete Dominic, and he touched on it a little bit, so I was a little more open to it. But no one ever asked me, so I'm like, I don't want to be on like a loudspeaker and tell everybody. Uh, if it, but if I get asked, I'm not going to lie. I want to be honest. And then honestly, since I told you on the show. Mm-hmm. Obviously, nobody caught it on YouTube, but uh, <laughs> I, I felt better that I did that I got it out. Yeah. So I, from now on, I'm way more to, I'm way more into talking about it because I 
I don't want to hide. Well, that's a big part so, of it too. Like, did you know? And, and you know, you put out the book and everything. Was there a part of you, even as you're transitioning, that's like, I've put so much time and effort and energy into the music and into this band. I don't want people to forget about the band and me become this thing that let's just talk about this person and the journey that they went through transition. Well, no, because I mean, like the narrative of my band for years before that was always like, are you a sellout? Are you not a sellout for whatever record label I was on? It's never about the music, you being in a band. You right. go out and you do press and like the press is going to latch onto whatever story they want to latch onto. No one's like, what kind of guitars did you use on this <laughs> record? Or like you were stoked on a new amp you got or anything? Like no one cares about that. No, yeah. one, no one cares about the songwriting craft or right. something like that. So it's always something that doesn't matter. And when it comes down to it, like, you know, maybe it would have grabbed a couple headlines coming out or something like that. But like, if the music isn't good or if your shows aren't good, no one's gonna care. No one's gonna come out and see you. What was the first show you did after you came out? The oh, it first was so time you... lame. It was so lame. Um, we played with the Cult, and it was a show in San Diego at this like outside seated venues venue with like folding chairs. And there's all this like pressure. People are like, oh, it's your first show as a woman. It's like, no, fuck off. It's just a show. Like we're just playing a show. We're opening for another band. Didn't your voice sound different though? No, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It works like that with testosterone, but not. No, it doesn't work like that with estrogen. Okay, so oh. yeah, I would have thought the same thing to tell you the truth that the hormones would would no. mm -mm. bring you down. So you saying the same as up. you sang before? Yeah, uh -huh. and the fans have been really. It's really the, the fans have been really cool. Like certain performers, you might think, yeah, the fans, but when you think punk or hard, like you think the fans would be harder for them to accept that. But sure. Like, well, I mean, like for the most part, you know, I mean, it's like a line in the sand. Like, you know, anyone's coming out to a show that is on the same page as you. But then also, like, there was a lot of fans we were losing because, like, they felt like they didn't feel safe at our shows anymore, especially as, like, we started touring with more other, more mainstream acts and, like, there was more of, like, a jock element at our shows where, like, people were like, I don't feel comfortable here. I feel like I'm going to get beat up for being a freak. And that's not what, like, punk rock is. You know, it's supposed to be like a island of misfit toys at a show. You said Springsteen gave you good advice too. Uh, he did. He wrote me a, a, a letter, like, but that was like in in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah, because I like saw the that. photo. Yeah. It was you uh, before you transitioned with him yeah, and his yeah. son. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what was it about? It was something to do with the label. Um, it was just about you know people calling you a sellout and not taking that you know and just being true to what you do and like as long as you get up there on stage and give it your all you know after that let the cards fall where they may you know like and it just like really like. He, it was a real supporter. Really. People think that if you do, sorry, people think no. if you do well, like when Metallica cut their hair all of a sudden, you guys are fucking sellouts. Like whenever <laughs> a band does something a little bit different. Succeeding. A, success or more people discover you, the fans automatically interpret that because the fans like to have this secret thing. Right, it's where, ours. Where it's ours and when right. they're protective of it and then any change or any notoriety, they think it's a sellout. Which I get. I mean, I grew up in punk rock too, but to me, like selling out always meant giving up on your dreams and like, okay, I'm not going to play music anymore. I'm going to go get some some job I hate, some soul sucking existence that is Or change the band to, to fit a label's image or right, something like right. that. Mm -hmm. I remember Jason Newstead, I saw a video of him in Metallica saying, uh, Yeah, we sell out every seat in the stadium. <laughs> I saw that too. Yeah. <laughs> that was that, pretty cool. Was that the, the Bruce thing? I think I read that didn't that follow like that, that there was an anti against me rally or group or something like that? Well, I had like gotten, that. like, arrested the night before. Right. Um, and, like, Because you got in a fight with a bunch of people, right? Yeah, I kind of snapped and and uh, lost it for what a second. What happened? I was in Tallahassee, Florida, and I was in a coffee shop and, like, went back to use the restroom, was coming back, and someone had taken, like, a picture out of the weekly magazine and, like, you know, whatever, wrote a bunch of shit on it. And I, like, tore it down, and some kid got up in my face. He's like, why'd you do that? And, like, just got really rude with me and then, like, turned around and walked away and I, like, came after him. I'm like, like, what's wrong with you? You know, I'm like, I'm a human being. You don't know me. Why are you treating me like this? And he was just like so smug, you know? And uh, he's like, as far as I'm concerned, this con conversation's over. And as far as I was concerned, it wasn't over. So <laughs> I I attacked him, you know? Yeah, I, I kind of feel, as you know? uh, far as I'm concerned, this conversation's over. It must feel so good to hit a person after this. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I, I slammed his head into the table, jumped on him, and then, but I didn't realize that there was an against me protest show happening there that night in the cafe. So so it was like everyone oh, Jesus. in a protest show. Yeah, a protest what show. What were they protesting? Because they were protesting us playing. Why? Why? Because we were sellouts. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, they were old fans? Oh, they weren't they against were you. They were old fans. fans. Oh, like, okay. we oh, were no my. longer fans. So, like, I didn't realize the second I walked in And this is before transitioning. Yeah, yeah, and this, this is, has like nothing to do with that. Wait, your yeah. fan was trying to fight you. Yeah, well, ex-fan, I guess. Yeah, because yeah. you were more successful than he when he 
originally started liking it. Yeah, and again, like we're playing <laughs> for maybe shit. there was like two hundred people at the show that night. It wasn't like huge or anything, and you know, but I didn't realize like everyone in that room was like watching me the second I walked in. So like the second the fight started happening, like everyone jumped on me. So it was like ten on one, you know. They helped them. Like they were such shit fans. <clears throat> they helped a, f- a the fan in that, and they didn't. They they jumped on you totally, and then they called the cops. That's Punks awful. called the cops. What <laughs> awful. Yeah. Wow. Were, <laughs> it's so crazy that they were how did that feel like does it I mean to know that there are old fans that are so passionate that they're protesting you Right. Well, you know, like, I mean, does that mean that, like, does it feel even more successful that people care that much, or does it no, just it feel just shitty? No, it just exposes it to be bullshit. Like yeah. all of it. Like all this. Like we're going to start a revolution, anarchy, and all this shit. You know, I remember, like, you know, we played this b- b- Polish American Hall on Long Island uh, in like 2003, 2004, and it was like a 16 year old fan sh- set it up. It was eight dollars to get into the show, and people came. They slashed our tires. So, like, a couple shows later, we see the kid who slashed our tires, and there's like about to be a confrontation happening out in front of the show, and I. I look over and I see a punk pick up a brick and I'm like whoa this kid is potentially gonna bash my brains in because he doesn't like the record label we're on and we're on fat records at this time we're not on a major <laughs> label and he's gonna kill me over this you know and I was just like fuck this fuck punk rock fuck you you know yeah I'm out yeah cuz it's people just are, are using that as an excuse to behave the way they want to behave it's like what kind of thing it's that mad if you change record label it's ins- it's insane it's about something else totally plus it's like you must get up there like when you start getting new fans like I want you guys to like me, but don't like me that much. Like just enjoy the show because last time we had passionate fans They threatened to kill us because we fucking changed record labels totally and I mean to me It was always just absurd and it was you know like everyone's having this argument like are you punk? Are you not punk and it's like I don't care privately? I'm just like I have gender dysphoria. I don't know how to deal with this your argument is stupid I just do not care. This is the farthest thing from what I'm thinking about I'm trying to figure out if I'm schizophrenic or not. I don't care what you label my music genre. I see nine people in the mirror. I don't care who my agent is It's so much more terrifying to know that your fans would do that because of of a label than then to know that you're gonna tell the world that you're transgender I don't know that would really yeah. slow me down somebody tried to kill me with a brick because I was on a shitty label now I'm gonna tell everybody that I'm a woman what kind of group is coming for me now like that did you think did that cross your mind totally yeah totally do you do drugs I, I, I do yeah uh-huh. so you still running a little bit I mean I, I I've definitely calmed down I smoke weed just that's it? Yeah. I mean, I'll have a drink every once in a while. I was, I've was i been dry for the last two months. I had a celebratory drink last night. We did the Seth Meyers show or whatever. But how was that? Be... What's that? The how Seth Meyers show? Yeah. Oh, it was great. Really, really fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. Why'd you go dry for two months? Just because? Just um, well, I had a back injury. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, at the beginning of it, we just did this tour with Bad Religion. And I had a back injury, so I was taking, like, some some pills some from my back. And I was like, okay, if I'm taking pills, I don't I don't want to drink while doing pills, you know? Probably one of the... One of the uh, most interesting things that I thought about the book was just like you really go through how much you struggled with this for years and years and years. And at one point you're talking about you started by praying and just trying to reach out to God and say like, OK, if God exists, he'll help me and blah, blah, blah. And then when that wasn't helping, you turned to say you tried Satanism. I, I signed my soul to the devil. I yes. did that for skateboarding. You did? <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. I did that wow. when I was 13. I thought it was cool. Did you write out a literal <laughs> contract? Oh, it was so clear. Oh, it's embarrassing. Like a suburban angst. I signed it in blood. Like a did you really yeah, no, do I, that? I, I yes, did it too. I signed it in blood. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Fuck, yeah, everybody on that cool. side of the table has I, everything in common. I, I didn't sign my name. Exactly. We all hate you. <laughs> 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 Satan told me to keep that a secret. <laughs> God damn, you all signed your name in blood? I didn't sign my name in blood. I just prayed to him every night to uh, let me be a professional skateboarder. Yeah, and guess what? He answered. Didn't Boom. He? <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. But I got, I got kicked out of church. Like, my church, I went to a church, and, like, they started paying for me to see a psychiatrist and then eventually, like, told me, don't come to church anymore. And it was like, wow, God is is telling me not to go to church. This yeah. is wild. You know? Did you ever almost get caught growing up? Like, you must have been doing something as a teenager or whatever, where you, like, where you came, like, this close to getting outed or exposed. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was one time, like, I had skipped school, and I was sitting on the back porch of my mom's house, and I was smoking weed in a dress, and, like, the meter man came through the back fence, and I was like, fuck, and <laughs> so on inside, you know? Um, and then there was, like, another time where, like, 
I like I, my favorite thing used to be like I'd skip school and like there was an app, two hours of television where it was like back to back episodes of Wings and Quantum Leap and then MacGyver after that. <laughs> Shout out and to I MacGyver. would just yeah, like dope. I would make myself clue and clue and creams and sit and, <laughs> and drink clue and creams all day and dress and just like watch, and watch TV. Wings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was that's great. bizarre under any circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody putting on a dress and sipping beverages watching Wings. <laughs> but I passed out one time and like and like right before my parents came home and like woke up seeing them pulling in the driveway so there was like many close calls like that and know? they would how did they have they are they alive um yeah uh-huh so they're cool with it, right um i i haven't talked to my father since i came out and what? um I, be, he I, I don't know just it ended communication like i i wrote him a letter coming out you know and tried my best to explain myself i'm sure it wasn't that eloquent uh and i just got like a cryptic one word response what did know? it say uh not one word but it said uh for now the door is open but we'll see and no. um, it was just like the what fuck? does that mean fuck wait you. for now the door is open was there other stuff that he was saying that because of like or was it just because of this i mean like my parents divorced when i was like 12 years old or something like that so it, ever since then it was always kind of a strange relationship you know my dad was army um grew up in a oh. military family and it just it was what it was but my mother's been really supportive and see so that is like oh that's my son and this what's you know, the, it's a lot of I've heard a lot of people say that the dads have a hard time with it sometimes. Yeah, I mean that's not cool. That's the most know. important one. Moms have go, are gonna understand, but uh, your dad, when he understands it, then you feel like the world has accepted you. Because that that one for me would be, come on, man, like you think I'm doing this for attention? Like right. you got to understand my and you, and he's not. He didn't give you the. I mean, like like Sam and Jim said, well, you you weren't that close with him in the, in the beginning, but he. I mean. Was he mean to you? Were you still friends before this? Yeah, I mean... So he has switched off to you. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, I have a seven-year-old daughter, and it's like, you know, he has no contact with my daughter either. It's just like... Just since that, that's it. That's it. That was wow, it. so you have a seven-year-old daughter, and, and you've become a mummy, kind of. Yeah, I mean, she still calls me dad, you know, but she says she and her. She just, like, she just it's not an issue it. to her. Didn't yeah. she ask you that she wanted you to still be a boy? That was, like, right after I came out, yeah. Uh -huh. Was that hard? It was like was heartbreaking. Really, yeah. yeah, I mean, it like totally destroyed me for sure, you know. But now it's okay. Yeah, I mean, like kids just want to know you know, love right? them and they, they aren't going away. I know. You know? Do you? So. Have, I know you got pretty big hands. Do you like tie <laughs> it up and put it back? Is that was that? Did you? Is that new or like uh, when you first started doing that? Do you put it? Do you tuck it? <laughs> What? No, I mean I don't give a I don't give a shit. You know, like it's just there. for me, like if it's hard for someone to understand that like sometimes girls have a penis and sometimes boys have a vagina, mm. then that's their issue. That's not my issue. You don't go there. I don't have a problem with myself anymore. Like coming out was totally liberating and like completely like fixed all the issues in my head in that way where it's just like I am the way I am. And especially having a suicidal nervous breakdown. Then after that it was like, you know what? Like there's an out. I can always just go and slip my wrist after this, you know, like but since <laughs> since I'm not gonna, then fuck anyone who has a problem with me, and you know, like fuck you if you don't get it. And I want to hug you, like, but it's like <laughs> we I'll can do hug it later. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm yeah, not, it's I'm, gonna be fucking intense. I'll tell you that <laughs> it's gonna be a tight one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not trans, but sometimes I tuck anyway just to show myself who's boss. <laughs> 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 uh, Laura, do you feel like Jim's relating to you on that? Or, or, or? I'm more confused than I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? No, I never understood tucking. It just seems like remarkably uncomfortable. Uh, so, look, sit on a plane but I think like these that. are like these are misconceptions. These are yeah. like stereotypes. These are like you know like this is like a uh, cisgendered person's like understanding of what it means to be trans. No, trans know? people have told me that. Like uh, like uh, one girl I know, I, she just went through SRS and she said that for her the worst part besides like feeling like yeah the dick didn't necessarily belong What's there SRS sexual reassignment surgery was uh -huh. was going on a plane or going to the beach and I've texted her since like hey how are you since the surgery she goes great I can go swimming on the beach now and I'm like I get that but that's also seems like it's more about other people's perception than like you know what I mean? Like totally, totally. Yeah, I mean, I get I get flagged every time I go through airport security, sure. like the the Provision body scanner machines, where they're always like, uh, "You have an anomaly in your crotch." That's what they say yeah. to me. Yeah. I yeah. always brag yeah. about it because I'm like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" <laughs> I've actually said that to people about myself. You want to check out my anomaly? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not that unusual. <laughs> I tried those, work properly. <laughs> I tried those pants on. A, a, a friend of mine left those uh, the underwear and the tie thing in my bathroom once. In uh, oh, like there's I, an actual like. Tied device. Yeah, specifically it's called made it, for the that. gaff. It's what? Oh, gaff. It is. Well, I wasn't okay. sure, but I, I hooked that bad boy up on me and put it all in there, in it, and I was like, man, I, I'm not like uh, 
sitting down or anything. Like I don't understand how you how you pull it off. Yeah, but I guess you get used to it. Some some girls are bigger than others. So I think maybe that might help. But is I, that a Morrissey quote? <laughs> <laughs> it, is. Yeah. it is. No, Judy Blume. I can't believe I actually know that, man. That's my only song that I know from her. Him, by the way. So, like, you know, Close. when you're talking about people's perceptions and stuff, how ready were you to go from somebody who's literally, I mean, struggled with this all their life as much as anybody's ever struggled with anything, suicidally struggled with this for decades, to then become this representative of the community because you know I wasn't ready for it at all. That's why I had a nervous breakdown. Right. You know, it was like a year later. It was just a public like, this figure. is too much pressure. I'm yeah. you know, losing it. You know? Yeah. Because you do now have to represent like trans in the public eye for cisgender people to understand. Sure, but I, I always try to be really upfront with people and be like, you know, I am not a perfect person. I do not have all the answers. I can only speak for myself and for my experiences. That's why, it. And why did you uh, turn down a half a million dollars? I, I, I read that and I was wondering, is it anything to do with the fact that, well, this was a major label and I've gotten so much shit for being on other labels? You mean for music? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was punk guilt for sure. But then they came back and like offered us more money the oh, next so time around. Oh, so you did so. take it that time, right? <laughs> that next time around, we took it. Yeah. Well yeah. played. <laughs> yeah, taking the money is always okay. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why punks think that they have to be broke. You know, or fans of punks think they have to be broke. Well, there's broke. something about the struggle that's like, I think, uh, uh, an attractive thing. Like, that. Like we're going to fight against the system fight against the system and once you get paid like who are you fighting against you yeah, every single person that hates you for taking that deal would take that deal because i've been broke and i've had money and which i know better. which one's better <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> you enjoyed the money part a little better it's fucking really sweet it is every, right i've had a divorce so i was one time i was broken and i was rich then i was broke again so <laughs> every time i come back up i'm like note to self sell out <laughs> but since you make the money is it harder to write the same stuff like sometimes it's hard like when you when you when you're struggling against something and you feel shitty creativity works a little bit better because it's just a reaction to feeling shitty yeah sure. but if you feel good it's like it's kind of hard to find something to push against they think she sure. is Struggles still? <laughs> yeah, sure. Like, well, no, but there was a disconnect, like, originally being a band that, you know, we were an anarcho-punk band, you know, so singing about anarchism, and that's why you get called a sellout, because, like, being anti-capitalist and then making money off of your move, m music conflict, you know, those two things. Um, and singing about, like, dumpster diving and stuff like that, and then you're like, well, I no longer dumpster dive, so what, what am I going to write about now? You know, like, um, is, is that that's identity, you know, and, and that, that had a lot to do with dysphoria, too, of feeling like, okay, you know, you latched on to these identities that it was like, I can't express myself as I feel. So I'll be punk and I'll charge out my hair and I'll wear a big spiky leather jacket and ripped up jeans, whatever. And then like you, you lose that identity and then dysphoria comes out more strongly. You know, have you talked to John Lydon at all? Uh, I've never met him. No. Uh -uh. So this is like the last three years. Would you say it's the first time in your life that you felt normal? Um, yeah, I like that I can be myself, especially like on stage, you know, like I'm not up there being like, who am I? What is who that, are you people? You know, what is it like to like not have that? Th you know, what I mean? because even it, it's an unpleasant thing to grow up struggling and struggling and struggling. And when you finally fix it, are you prepared to not have that struggle? You know what I mean? Because that becomes an identifying thing. Like, that's just who I am. I struggle. Yeah, without right. that pit in the stomach feeling. Well, but, right. but also, I mean, you know, it's that, that that's, our, that's wrong, actually. You know, like, I still don't have it all figured out. And my concept and understanding of gender is still continually evolving, you know? And it's yeah. not like... I. It's like to say like, oh, you transitioned is false. It's like you're in transition, you're transitioning, you know, but then really that's life, you know, like you're constantly evolving and like learning and becoming who you are, you know, um, and I don't have it all figured out. I don't like I have an idea of who I'd like to be in 10 years, but I don't really know who I'm going to be in 10 years, you know, um, but like when it comes down to it, like I still suffer from depression and depression is a mental illness, you know, um, and, and it's not necessarily tied to the dysphoria, you know, um, so I still struggle, you know, like, and I still like, I mean, my life that I have on tour with my band is one thing when I'm surrounded by everybody. But other than that, like I go back to Chicago and it's like, boom, you're alone, you know, like, and I, I, I don't know. Do you, uh, so do you feel like you want to go through surgeries or you don't know yet? Or do you see yourself down the road as being like having breasts in a vagina or do you not Wait. even think about that or you just don't know? Oh, I have tits. I was going to uh, say, you didn't catch that? Yeah. No, I, I she's wearing a big jacket. jacket. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't you notice that, Jason? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, but, <laughs> no, and, you know, honestly, like tattoos have been a good learning lesson with that. Where like you go in for a tattoo and you have this idea of like, oh, the tattoo will look like that. And, you know, this is what I want done. And sometimes you come out and you're like, oh, it's a little fucked up and it doesn't quite 
quite look how I thought it would look, you know, or I don't quite like it, you know. So like knowing that with surgeries and stuff like that, you know, I, you know, how that those titties come out. You happy? <laughs> Are you Jason? <laughs> I don't know. I want to see. I mean, big, <laughs> you can't tell she's wearing a very big jacket and a big shirt. What's, what's the Australian phrase? Tits out for the boys. <laughs> is, it, is that what they say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I love. I want to write a song called "Tits Out for the Boys." I'm sure it'll be a good one. I'd love to hear. It. <laughs> yeah. So see here. I'd love to help you write it, actually. <laughs> but you are you you're you're happy with that part of it? I, I I've accepted myself. You know, I yeah. am. P plastic surgery doesn't fix a broken soul. You right. Know? But they look good, though. <laughs> More to the point. <laughs> hey, I seriously think it's uh, uh, like your demographic because it's not all transgender people. Don't the the people that you're talking to or your fan base? They don't know about it. Like you know, they live in another world where they listen to your kind of music, and that's not around them a lot. So I feel like what you're doing. I know it's you're doing what you what you've got to do because you are who you are. But you realize it's a very important thing. Like you're talking to people, because yeah. to me, my I have a radio show where I talk to a lot of Neanderthals, mm -hmm. and if I'm by, they're like, "Wait, you're supposed to smash it and and like titties." I'm like, "I do," but I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I also don't mind like transgender girls, and every now and then, if a guy wants to blow me, I might be into that. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't. It doesn't ruin me. And they're like, "Well, if it doesn't ruin you, maybe it's okay. Maybe I'll be more acceptable to people like that around the world." So I feel like what you're doing. I mean, it's helping you, but you, you do know, like, all the fans, the music, the people that are into your music, they don't know this. Sure. And you're introducing them to it. You're like, I don't want to do it, but, like, Caitlyn Jenner, you're like Caitlyn Jenner to real people, not a bunch of fucking yeah. shitty housewives. No disrespect to them, but you're usually stupid. You're talking to the, <laughs> the kids, you right. know what I mean, that I feel like are more important than people that watch... Uh, the Kardashians on TV. Sure, right. but that's why it's important to be visible and to represent who you right. are. You know. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, okay. and it is, and it is. A, 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 I mean, as far as punk rock messages go, to be true to yourself to that level is about as punk rock as you could be, right? I, I, I hope so. That's what one would think. One would think. Well, listen, we do. Uh, you have to. We have to let you go. We have to let you go do your show. Uh, oh, hey, fuck. Not yeah. Good, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stupid. It's flown show. by. Uh, but it's been great talking to you. Everybody, pick up the book. And you're touring. Who are you touring with now? With Green Day? Uh, in March, we're going out with Green Day. Okay, yeah. great. Uh -huh. And the book is just called uh, Tranny. Uh, Laura Jane Grace and uh, Confessions of Punk Rock's most infamous anarchist sellout. My eyes are going badly. <laughs> I really am. I do we do reads for Audible. I'm like I really yeah. have to do that because my fucking eyes suck. Jim is transitioning into a very old man. <laughs> yes, I am <laughs> doing a great job. <laughs> uh, she's got a bunch of signings though. Uh, if you want to uh, meet Laura, you can tomorrow go to Politics and Prose in Washington D.C. Saturday, uh, Miami Book Fair. Sunday, Books a Million in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, November 21st in Ann Arbor, November 29th in San Francisco, then Los Angeles, then Santa Monica, then on December 2nd, back to Chicago. Um, so keep an eye out for all those signings, and uh, if she's not coming to your town, buy the book. Thank you so much. Thanks for having You're me. You're really interesting. Yeah, it was right fun. On. Thank you. And uh, Jason. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get busy over here. i got to go, too. <laughs> yeah, people can hear the Jason Ellis show in, like, a uh, few minutes. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. But if, you know what? what? I hear the best parts of the Jason Ellis show are the second and third hours, so you don't have to turn off our show. Oh, is it like that? You could just listen to our last yeah, we, hour. We're going to remedy this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yes, I'm sure um, we will. But Jason Ellis is on Faction, uh, so tune into that uh, in like five minutes. And uh, we'll be right back with Nick Kroll. And John Mulaney. And John Mulaney. Man, you guys get kissed. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, welcome back again. Yes. Thanks to Laura Jane Grace for coming in. Yes. And Jason for stopping in. Jason Ellis is always great. I'll be on Jason Ellis' show right after this show. So uh, yes. today, uh, once we're done here, turn on Faction, and I'm walking over and... Uh, doing Jason's show right after, so that'll be a good time. Uh, if you want to call in, 866-969-1969. You want to tweet in, Jim and Sam show, and that's across all forms of social media, including YouTube. Amazing uploads have been happening all the time. Wow. Uh, let's, uh, let's bring in our next guest, huh? It's a busy show today. It's a busy show today. 
Jim's going to be in Florida all weekend. Yeah, tomorrow and Saturday only at the Improv in Fort Lauderdale. Nick Kroll and John Mulaney. Yes. They're, they're both brilliant stand-ups. They but they're promoting Oh Hello on Broadway. It's now through January the 15th at the Lyceum Theater. It's uh, on West 45th Street. Yes. OhHelloBroadway.com if you want tickets. Uh, these shows do sell out. I got to see it on Broadway. It seemed like just a, a, a major, it just felt like an accomplishment to see this show get put on on Broadway. Because you could tell it was something that Nick and John really wanted to put on and put all this time. And it must have been hard to get made. And the fact that it was shown on Broadway and everything, it was, and, and people were laughing in the audience and enjoying it, was, uh, it, was, it was cool to see. Welcome, guys. What's up, guys? Hi, guys. How you doing? We're good. We were in the room when you were saying all those nice things. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I got uncomfortable by minute 45. I was like, wow. I should just ask them how they did it. <laughs> we sat down We had so Jim slowly. Norton on the show off-Broadway. That's how we did it. That's how we got the That's run. right. That's true. At the Cherry Lane. Yeah. That's amazing. It was a fun show to do. Is it? T- I, I, I was thinking about that. The fact that one of the segments in the play has a different interview guest. And I feel like if I was putting on a play, I wouldn't want the extra stress of also having to book a guest for every night. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's probably pretty similar to what you guys do that you just deal with you you do your show and then you have the this element of guests and people coming in you sort of host them and you sort of just move on and keep doing the show yeah do you like it because it keeps it fresh like in stand-ups yeah. it's kind of hard to i mean we do the same thing every night but this is kind of harder to go off book if you're in a in a script we have we have a good amount of improvising just in the rest of the play but the interview does make it like uh does make it fresh and also helps like place the show in time, you know, because like you're doing the same thing every night and then you're doing the same thing twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday. And there is a weird thing where you're like in the middle of the play and I'll think like, what day is it? How like, where are we? Like, how many times have we done this? Like, you just done it a million times. Right. You just lose track of, break, of everything. You can at least go like, that was the night Seth Rogen came. That was yeah. the night Stephen Colbert came. Right. And right. and John and also John's getting very good at dropping the names of the people who've done the show so far. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's not funny. You know what? That's not funny to okay. accuse me of being obnoxious. Okay. When I'm trying to publicize the okay. show. Okay. Okay. Let's just do it. Let's talk about other stuff. All then. right. Let's do our personas that were like each other. Do you do you worry though with the guests like the people? Are, have you have you gone? Have you done any shows where people are disappointed because you'll say like, yeah, Seth Rogen was here and Alan Alda was here, and then somebody comes on who's a star, but they're not Alan Alda. Yeah, I think people have an expectation sometimes. You if you call if you introduce someone and they're like, no, oh, that's not the most famous person in the world. Be- and- I know. I experienced that walking out on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen those blank, uncomfortable <laughs> stares. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, like it was amazing. Like I went to uh, an SNL a few weeks ago, and Emily Blunt and Bruno Mars were there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like while that's happening, the thing comes up on the screen that says next week Lady Gaga and Tom Hanks, mm-hmm. and the audience audibly went, "Oh, yeah," because they were like, "They're <laughs> but they're more famous than the people that we're but seeing." I, it, it is. It, it it can happen that way. I think. I mean, the truth is, like we've had. Guests who are I mean you have very famous people and and then they're not actually fun and very quickly the audience forgets who they're you know once you get past, like, ladies and gentlemen, John Mulaney, uh, right. and people are bummed people out are about bummed that, out about that. <laughs> uh, then you, uh, once you're there up on stage and you but just start talking. once they realize I'm not going to do time, they're, <laughs> they're relieved. They're, relieved. they're, they're, relieved, they're very you know? comfortable. it's forced. <laughs> um, <laughs> like Robin Bird, perfect example. Yeah. Not every person in the theater knew who Robin Bird was, even though she is Jim, do you know who Robin Bird is? I know the name, but I, w- I don't know what she does. Mm-hmm. Really? No. That's so... Well, you didn't did grow, you grow up, up in New York City. Right, I grew up in Jersey. Yeah, what did does Robin you, Bird do? Robin Bird hosted a co- cable access show that interviewed porn stars and strippers. Okay, yeah, but I, I, I know the name. I yeah. just didn't. Yes, yeah, like, like she and Al Goldstein brought a famous okay, sure, uh, case against the Supreme Court about. Uh, not not nudity, against the Supreme Court. No, they went they went <laughs> against the Supreme Court. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was, it was yes. Bird Goldstein v. Supreme Court. Yes, it drove Thurgood Marshall into retirement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they she, wanted to take over as the just two justices <laughs> yeah. of the Supreme Court. Uh, but nobody people magazine. didn't exactly know who she was and then or some people did. The people who grew up like, you know, you know, I used to like come into New York City and like go to my friend's house and watch Robin Bird and like see her interview like strippers and porn stars. It was amazing. People didn't quite know who she was, but then once you get into the interview, it then is it's just super fun and interesting talking to this woman who's been and done and seen everything and everyone. 
I, we also bring people up from the audience sometimes as our guests, and I, I swear those those are the best interviews. They are, right? Because they're not people who are used to being interviewed or talking. Yes. So like, they, yeah. They have and, nothing and, to protect. Like and, everybody's, and everybody's discovering this person together. So, like, we, John picked a guy out of the crowd last week, and we brought him up. He's a guy with a mustache, and he gets on stage, and, and we're like, it, it, originally, this was right before the election. He's from Ohio. From Defiance, Ohio. And then, but it was then realized that he lives in New York, and he's a cop in New York, a cop who works in, like, community relations. And it was just a super interesting guy to talk yeah, to a he's cop. he's NYPD community outreach to bridge the gap between people and cops. So it was like our characters. It was like he had to de- he deals with guys like us all day long, yeah. right? Complaining about like you know the you know Gestapo tactics, but then also freaked out also as like a black like, person. This guy came to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so it, it, they're all they all end up fun as long as we have details. As long as the person's willing to talk to us, you right? Know? How'd right. you get Alan Alda? He seems like he's hard to get to do things. Mm. He's older, you know. Yeah, we eventually we've been after him for years. We've yeah. been trying to get him for Kroll show. We've been trying to get him for a lot of stuff. And then I think, I honestly think it was Louis' show. Yeah, we had connections through to Horace and Pete. Through the through the yeah through Horace and Pete and uh, a guy named Dave Becky. And so I think we just we just worked it through that, and then he had heard enough the, about the, it. The word Broadway helped. Yeah, yeah sure. As opposed to like, do you want to meet two Muppets? <laughs> it's like, do you want to do? Yeah. yeah, I guess it's different than trying to get him to do your podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, before um, now, go now range. we've got some momentum. In the beginning, though, it was like. It's called Oh Hello on Broadway. We want you to do a segment called Too Much Tuna. By the way, my name's John. He's Nick. We don't play John and Nick. We play old men. You'll get served tuna fish. Do you want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people were just sort of confused. I don't know what you're talking about it right t- now. It took like, you know, you, you, you show, you get a little press about people doing it and it helps. Who were you the most nervous to have on? There must have been somebody who like one of you really looked up to. Marsha was- Clark. Marsha Clark, the OJ yeah. She did it? Yeah, she did it. She was on That's our LA amazing. version. Yeah. Oh, sorry. David Byrne, too. Yeah, we had David Byrne from the Talking Heads and and much more this past weekend, which was I, and rad. I blew his intro really badly because yeah. I was so nervous. Yeah, what'd you do? I was just I was like, he's an acclaimed uh, composer. I, I started. He was with, like he's, an he's acclaimed composer. composer. He's complained. He's complained, com- and I went I went like acclaim, p- complain, c- complain, p- acclaimed. He's the founder of the Talking so Heads, great. David Byrne. Yeah. That probably so works for the character you're doing. It's playing an old man. It's not like you're playing a. I know that is the advantage. However, Anytime. a little broke through where you're like, oh, this, oh. this young man is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking panicking. Yeah. So uh, why Marsha Clark? Why were you nervous? She seems like she'd be fairly easy to talk to. She was really easy to talk to. I was, I was actually most nervous when I had to call her and explain the bit to her. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm obsessed with the OJ trial, and yet I didn't know how to... So what to say. I'm like, do you say I'm a big fan? Right. Like, I don't know what... I admire your lack of ability to get it done. <laughs> yeah. But I admire her ability, so I'm, you know, I was like, hey... Yeah, I, I just I, I I started spinning. Nick has a photo of me talking to her on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. I went, so "Hi, nice. I believe you already." That yeah, was that thing like when like high school students give a speech and they use too many words. Like, yeah, we are already at the point where we are trying to talk to you. It was just like. It was spinning out of control. Yeah. She was the sweetest, though. And she was nice. She was awesome. She was really cool. She was awesome. And she, we talked to her about like Cochrane and like this was before the show. the The show had come out, but the uh, the um, documentary hadn't come out. People, uh, the FX show was airing at that time, but not the Thirty for Thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. But it was it was really cool. And then and I mean, they're all. I mean, Alan Alda was pretty nerve wracking. That was that was our first show. David Byrne. It's a lot of the folks who are also like we. I saw F. Murray Abraham, who you would know from like. Home Homeland now, Scarface. yeah, and Scarface yeah. and Salieri and Mozart, and I saw him on the street. He plays a he's he's referenced in our show, and um and he's like a major plot point in the show, but you never see him. And I saw him on the street, and I was like, "Hey, we do this show. It's called Oh Hello, and we have this bit where you you get referenced, but we never see you. Uh, we would you like to do it?" And he was like. But I'm. I don't understand. What, what do you want me to do? And I was like, Well, we we would. We don't see you on the show, but we'd like you to do it. And he's like, So in a way, I'm already doing my job. Yeah. And you're like, All right. You say I'm going to come out, and then I don't come out. Yeah. So I'm already doing it. <laughs> um, but it's it's really fun. Specifically, the people who don't have a ton of reference point for who we are or what we do. But at the same time, it's also like Berbiglia did the show the other night, and we've John and Mike and I have known each other for. 
you know, however long we've all known each other, like eight, almost 20 years. So at that point, you then have like three old friends on stage. Right, so. right, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we had Ray Kelly on the off-Broadway version. Former police yeah, commissioner. Former Ray. Yeah. Police. And it's one of those things where I was nervous <laughs> about offending him with language, you know? Really? But he's like the former police commissioner. Right. He probably used a little bit of language. He's also seen everything. He's yeah. seen like heads yeah. blown open, so he's yeah. not like offended. <laughs> Are you a true crime like fanatic or is it just the OJ trial? You do like a true crime. I like a true crime. Is that why yeah. you want to Ray? That's a good point, man. Maybe that's why you want Ray Kelly. Well, I, well, Ray Kelly, we just wanted is the quintessential New Yorker. He's a and he funny was had been a beat cop on the Upper West Side, so he'd yeah. been dealing with shitheads like our characters his, his whole career. Um, but it's honestly for us, it's almost it's just the idea of someone who does something. We had uh, a chef on Alex. Gornicelli, yeah, Gornicelli, yeah, who's on like Chopped and and Iron Chef. It's just fun to talk Head to people who, you know, at, at other kind who have other kinds of gigs besides just comedians and actors. Absolutely. Who are you not able to get that you've been trying to get? There's got to be one guy that you like you really want, but it's just too busy. The Rock. The uh, Rock. We have a, we have a standing offer to Steely Dan. Yes, we've been after <laughs> it. Yeah, sense Steely Dan, show. Donald Fagan, and 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 uh, Walter Becker are, are, are referenced a ton in our show. So all you Dan, <laughs> all you fans of the Dan out there, yeah, um, you know, get on social media, yeah, because you know that there's a change.org petition to get Steely Dan. I <laughs> know, oh, hello, on you guys really take to the streets. Yeah, do you worry when you're on stage that like because there's there's so many. References like there's a lot of the show that I feel like the humor relates directly to a Broadway crowd. Yes, because like there's there's inside Broadway jokes. Yes, there's also a bunch of inside Steely Dan jokes. Yes, yep. like <laughs> you worry you're going to be in front of a crowd that is not on the inside of that All, stuff. We've yet to meet a crowd that's completely in the pocket with the Steely Dan stuff. <laughs> yeah, but that's good. I, I, people people respect that you know something about something. People respect specifics. Yeah, <laughs> they like. And that. they're like even these they two don't guys care about Steely Dan, even though I don't know. Like I haven't read the liner notes to Gaucho. Or yes. Are um, you guys really huge Steely Dan fans? Was, that wasn't. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of Steely Dan. I think John's a massive fan. Yeah, of I see them every year at the Beacon. So yeah. is that what you do? I couldn't go this year because of this stupid Broadway show. <laughs> you, just, you just sit at home like listening to Steely Dan and watching old yeah, tapes maybe. of the OJ trial. Yes. <laughs> what if I? Yeah. I like that. that. I like a guy with what hobbies. If that happened yeah, a lot. That, I think that's good. It's genuinely true. <laughs> what about the OJ trial? Fascinates you? Oh, I just remember it's so visceral from growing up and. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. My family debated OJ for like dur all throughout the trial. Literally, it was all the Mulaney's versus OJ. <laughs> yeah. We had a civil suit against him for taking up a lot of our time. Yeah. <laughs> I remember my mom would watch me suck at basketball and she'd be sitting in the stands with a Walkman on listening to the trial on AM radio. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when they would debate, it would say your dad thought he was no, not guilty? No, no, no. Everyone thought he was guilty. Yeah. It, it was whether my parents are lawyers and they were like, Judge Ito oh. should be clearing the court. You would never allow that. Oh, my I dad, see. My dad had worked for a judge named Judge Weinfeld, and you always go, Weinfeld would never stand for this. <laughs> now, are they the kind of, are they, are they both uh, criminal attorneys or civil or? And my mom's a law professor at Northwestern University, and my dad is a corporate attorney. But they both went to law school and like to talk about everything. Yeah. And also it was just, uh, I don't know, it's just the most, I mean, why did we all watch that 30 for 30? It's the most interesting. Uh, trust me, I only ask you because so I'm layers. completely fascinated and yeah. obsessed with the OJ like case as well. I also like L.A. in the 90s, I like yeah. footage of L.A. in yeah. the 90s, is that, is no, that okay it's to like, say? Yeah, that's great to say. <laughs> L.A. footage of the 90s <laughs> those and like big, everyone. stupid restaurants. Yeah, those like Mezzaluna, like yeah. those restaurants and like where it was like people were like, Westwood is the coolest neighborhood to hang out in. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of big shoulder pads. Floral ties. So what did they think of, uh, did they think Marsha Clark did a good job, or did they think she didn't? And Chris Darden, they must have been like... Oh, they weren't that, they weren't like Monday morning quarterbacks about, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was mainly about Ito. They didn't they, like him. They were like, that is not how you run a courtroom. Right. Well, historically, and he it came down, yeah, he's not a great judge. No. Well, it's probably he, the whole world really is watching bad. us. The most, one of the most watched, the, it's the first time the whole... Planet got to see a trial out Yeah, like, yeah. Was a big it's the one. most watched. So he was trial. under a lot of pressure to not fuck up, and he fucked up. Yeah, but he, he also blew it. He, but, but he also, he also approved. The cameras, right, he also yes. weird. approved the idea of of the whole world watching. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, and then he would. It, it's just like unprecedented to give like these little soliloquies about what's happening as the judge. But I think there are he a lot of the Anna Nicole Smith judge, Judge Larry Sidlin. Yeah, they're my favorite judges because they just would talk emotionally about what was happening all the time. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of judges that are like a lot of doctors who have these like god complexes that get to stand up in front of people and, and they're the ones sure. who, yeah. who, who say what goes. Well, it's and like stuff it's also so... like religious people like or if you like I feel like half the rabbis in the country were like. With, 
wanted to be actors, and they're like, mm, I think I'll be a rabbi, and I'll have a captive audience. Yeah, right. yeah. I don't know if it's the same with like with like priests and shit. I think so. Yeah, like yeah, southern they, priests. They got to yeah. yeah. open with they got to open with a joke. Yeah, the same as anyone. Moils, else. the guys who do the circumcisions, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. always yeah. are doing shtick. I've never it's been to like, a priest that didn't have seven minutes of material. Yeah, really. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. gross. Yeah, yeah but I went to one that? bris. I can't go back. It was so uncomfortable. Noam son, it freaked me out. I, I wasn't used to hearing a baby cry like that. Like, yeah, it was just uh, really uncomfortable. That, actually, that's my ringtone. <laughs> um, the fucking animal wailing of a baby. Also, I, was, I was at a bris where we were all like back against the wall because no one wanted to look, uh -huh. and the moil kept being like, "Come on, gather around." Uh, I had to, around. from my my best friend from childhood. I, I held his like I I you know they they give a little wine to the baby yeah. to like to numb it all. Yeah, and I was holding You're like right. the gauze of wine in the baby's mouth and like had a bird's eye view of the like the. Ah. Of the fucking operation. That's Oops. terrible. It was it was a real trip. Yeah, it was really really uh And then I did it oh. to myself. Well John had to you know, John married a Jewish woman, so he he did a self did you do a self circumcision or no? Yeah, there's a kit. You can do it at home. <laughs> right. Uh, if you break the glass, then you pick up the little <laughs> shards exactly. of glass and then you, you just go, take care of it then there. The bride and groom depart and uh you, there's this little kit and yeah. <laughs> did cool. you did you convert? No, I didn't come. Oh, uh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, it's always weird to me. No, <laughs> no, I'm always saying oh, that's, that's, cool. that's cool. Okay, good, No, good, good. meaning when people are religious, and it goes both ways. Where, where like one has to. I, I know a Jewish girl, and she wants to get married, but she has to marry a Jewish guy, and she wants him to convert. And I'm like, there's so much to that. Who gives a fuck? I know, and and then she'll and then she'll get old enough where she doesn't care anymore. Maybe not. Yeah, because it's like just marry a good guy. You're gonna marry an asshole who converts, or yes. a nice guy who won't. Did you? Did she ask you to? Or you just like, I didn't want. Well, to. no, she was raised culturally Jewish, but no, we we were married by a comedian. We we didn't. Have a Who married you? Dan Levy. Who's got a special out it's on CISO. Lion on CISO coming out today. Yeah. Wow, that that worked well. I know. Jesus, yeah. now Dan owes me. I know. <laughs> but uh but yeah, but he he did your wedding, but but your family was is Catholic. Yeah, we grew up we're the most Irish Catholic people. Did so you, it wasn't important for either one of you guys. Uh, it's it's important for my it, family, it, it but the older I get, disappointed them, both families equally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and for me, I think at this point, my parents are just like uh, the idea that I would marry someone. Would be exciting for them. Do they want you? Do they bug is. you? It's, They've given it's up like on Joe Pesci's mom and uh, <laughs> in good Goodfellas. Fellas. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with him. I'm, I get a woman every night, mom. Yeah, yeah. We, and everyone comes over and she cooks some cooks John late meals. Why don't you find a nice girl? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I think they would just be psyched if I got married. But I don't have as much pressure. There's um, there's four. I'm the youngest of four kids, and they all all, all my siblings have four. Uh, Kids, so there's twelve of them. So have nobody. you come close? Nah, not really. Yeah, I mean you. you? Never, no, no, man, never engaged, never lived with a woman. Like I've mm -hmm. dated long term, few years, but it's, yeah. it's never been like, oh, this is <laughs> the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't was... have a, you don't have like a philosophical aversion to it. You just kind of have. No. Yeah, I kind of want a relationship at this point. I'm not pushing. Yeah, but you for don't think it. you'd ever get married? I, I'm not saying that I may. Really? If I love somebody enough, why not? It's like wow. I've seen single life for 48 years. Right. You know, yeah. What, yeah, what else like, do I need to look for? <laughs> right. Right. Well, what, and you and Sam, I mean, nothing. No, not at all. I mean, we <laughs> yeah. jerk off on a cracker once in a while, and the <laughs> kid over here gets <laughs> <laughs> kid over here gets a snack over here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like a family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like trying to force. It kind it. of is what family is. <laughs> yeah, family yeah, is. yeah, yeah it is. Video. It literally it's is. Jizz crackers. Like everyone. The parents dump all their shit on you, and you have to eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. Did you guys grow up like theater fans? Because that really did. I brought yeah. it up before, but that struck me when I was watching this show. Was like. These guys know a lot about Broadway. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in Chicago, but there's a ton of theater from the Goodman to the Steppenwolf and Second City, and there's lots of smaller uh, smaller theaters there. Also, everything uh, from Broadway either will preview there or tour there pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I was a theater usher at the big theaters where Broadway shows would come. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I like, I mean, I, I did some plays. I liked plays all right. I mean, honestly, it's both, it's a weird thing because it's both, as we say, like a love letter to theater, but also like a stalker's note written in lipstick on a mirror. <laughs> it's like a, you know, there's a, we, a lot of the things about plays is stuff that we can't stand about plays. Yeah. And that's, I think what I think helps audiences because like, you know, if you're not a theater fan, if you go, you're like, oh, I've seen that that's one of the things I fucking hate in a play. Yeah. What do you hate in a play? Uh, I mean, fake smoking. Fake smoking is annoying. People Have you screaming. Ever 
Have you? I mean, has anyone who's smoked? I, I in smoked a play, for seventeen years. Yeah. No, but has anyone who smokes in a play ever smoked a real cigarette? Yeah, they you, look it's fake like smoking. Weird, like, terrible. Up, they hold it like they're in a forties movie. Uh, we we do it in the show, but like one sided phone calls. You know, where like you yeah. make a phone call and you have to repeat all the information so that the audience knows what the other person on the other line is saying. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, it's just like also being in the crowd, being in the audience, and sitting next. I was at a play and I watched this woman open up a Tupperware. Of of um, blueberries or like a plastic thing from the from, and she started eating them and you could hear the plastic and I was like all right that's fine and then I saw a guy sitting on the aisle opposite her older guy getting so annoyed at her eating the blueberries and then I couldn't stop watching him nudge his wife and get pissed off about that because so it's you know for me it's like it's the experience partly it's the experience of going to a play what's it like. To be in the crowd, what's it like to be on stage and and acknowledge? Like to me, it's just my issue with theater is how embarrassing it is for everybody <laughs> to pretend like the two people on stage are in a Chinese restaurant. You know, right. It's like we're all yeah. in this fucking theater yeah. together. Like yeah, it I drives remember, me crazy. I remember crazy. in college being second row watching a good friend of mine pretend to be FDR, and I was just like, "What? This? You're not FDR." <laughs> at, every, at every play, I'm. I just what we just saw the front page, which is a great, great play, but it's set in the 1928, and it's starts with this big newsroom full of old-timey guys and I just wanted I like I just so wanted to just walk out on stage in a hoodie and be like hey everyone knock it off <laughs> <laughs> yeah I find I was telling him before I, I, I like some plays I see but I don't love the idea of a live play and you don't like musicals too yeah no I don't I, yeah. but I, I don't like uh, there's something about it maybe that's what it is, is we all know what's going on here. I even felt that way about sketch when I moved to the city and was doing like improv and sketch and stand-up like I had to stop doing sketch because I couldn't stand the idea of being on stage and not being able to acknowledge the audience or yeah. if a bit didn't work, not being able to like... So I, we started doing... We actually started doing these characters off uh, 10 years ago at at, a, at Rafifi in the East Village. Um, and it was be, it was partly so that we could acknowledge that we were in a fucking room with people. Right. And be yeah. like, hey, that right. joke worked. We were that didn't work. Yeah, we, we were, were hosts. hosted. We weren't doing like little pieces. It just drove me... It just made me uncomfortable. Well, that's the best part of stand-up is acknowledging... It's, it feels alive. Like if something flops, you just talk about it. Yes. If someone makes a noise... Yeah. You, you mention it. it's really hard to not mention what's a, a happening. A guy was falling asleep during the show a couple nights ago, and I just started throwing Swedish fish at him. Until he woke up. <laughs> and and it's he didn't fine. wake up. He did not. I mean, the he guy. Was... I was whipping him at him, and the whole crowd was laughing, and ev like we were all like, "Wake up!" And he would not wake up. And Isn't it, it nice? Was he dead? That was just a great story. He was dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he was like a young. That's the thing. It wasn't like an older gentleman. It was like a young guy in like a hoodie. And and John correctly like, and we can we can reference, and we start to uh, you know yeah, get I that said, into I, the show. I said he looked like Vincent Van Gogh if he did devil sticks. Yeah. <laughs> Like he had like a little red beard and he looked like a bum and I threw Swedish fish at him. And and then we just we like figured he was on methadone. Um, he really had that methadone. And, like, and then more of a nod off than a yes. comfortable But he was sleep. also yes. in the second row and like that's not an inexpensive ticket. The right. Whole, the whole picture made no sense <laughs> to me. When you're when you're Nick, I guess specifically, when you're so used to like writing characters that are quick, you yeah. know what I mean, for like crawl show. Sure. Is it difficult to then go forward and be like, we're gonna write this? 90 minute show. Um, not, yes and no. I mean, in this particular case, I think the reason we settled on, not settled on, we we, we were interested in doing these guys in a broader format is because we've, you know, accumulated like 10 years of bits on them. It's like almost like an old vaudeville act. Like you have a bag of bits that you can pull out. And so we have that. And then also it's just, we, they're such specific men that all, it just was giving a, all we need to do is take the time to focus on like their backstory, figure out where they were from. And it, and it started to write itself and expand itself out pretty quickly just because we already there was already a ton of information on them I don't know if all of the characters would have worked like right this. that makes sense that you could actually do it long form and do you guys now at this point will you just show up at the theater like right before I would imagine that because uh, no my wife uh, uh, Anna is our makeup artist and uh, oh of course uh, supervisor we do like let's see we each do like 40 minutes of makeup yeah it's a good amount of makeup to, to make wow. us look like and we this. Get, yeah, we get there. Think about you that. know, we get there and we're still changing jokes and we're still messing around. So we sit there and just talk over what we want to do that night. Yeah, it's the, it's kind of the most fun version of for for me at least of like what you always hoped show business would be, which is like you go to your theater, you and uh, and in this case, it's like we've got each other to sort of go through and talk about bits that we want to change and tweak, and then all of a sudden you have this guest come in and they join you and you. 
you know, you have this sort of unique to the night experience and then maybe you go, you know, go have a drink or a restaurant afterwards. It just feels like you're like, oh, like back when you thought about like what show business yeah. was. Yeah. It's kind right. of that. All day you have free and then you go do it at night. You yeah. Know? And then it's like we have it's like it's like having, you know, all told over 10 years, we have like three hours of jokes that we can interchange. Right. You know? And you also get to share the stage, which is so fun because there's yeah. times when you can just stop talking. Yeah. That's a bummer with stand up is you're just like, fuck, I don't feel it tonight. Or I'm like, you, and you don't have anyone to be like, can you just handle the next five minutes? Yeah. It's very difficult sometimes when you don't want to do it and you're like, oh man, I got 45 to go. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and I can't stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. Do you enjoy making each other break? Yes, because uh, yes. I, I, I yes. just noticed that. <laughs> Did you ever see on Carol when Burnett when Harvey it. Corman and uh, Tim? Con have you ever seen? Well, no, that's our me fear. That is our, <laughs> our. That is sort of our fear. Is that like, you know, like in you know comedy? I think comedians and folks are like, oh, look at them. Look, look at them break. How fucking? But John genuinely makes me laugh every night. Um, We're and not the, fake breaking. I'm doing things to disrupt. The show to make him laugh. Yes, right. You know? And the yeah, audiences right. <laughs> do. The audiences do enjoy. And then the audience makes me laugh. Yes. Right. Because we were about to say our final lines of the show, which are, you know, sort of like in a spotlight, very emotional, all quiet music playing, and this woman just went, yeah. <laughs> so loud, and I laughed so fucking yeah. hard. <laughs> it's true. Isn't it's it nice great. to have the freedom to laugh if it fucks up? That's so yeah, great, yeah. as opposed yeah. to doing a dramatic piece. It's crazy. It's we set the tone early in the show that this is not a professional effort, and <laughs> you all need to get used to it. Well, you can all go see it. If you go to ohellobroadway.com, you get tickets. It's at the Lyceum Theater, which is on 45th Street, and it's only playing through January 15th. And it's legitimately funny. I saw it at it the really Lane when I did it. It's, it's a really great show. Thanks, Jim. No, yeah. it's great, man. You can get rush tickets if you go to the theater. On day of. Day of. Yes. Less expensive. Mm -hmm. So go get tickets. Uh, thank you guys very much for being here. Thanks for, you, and, uh, Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we'll have can, can we just quickly soon. talk about Scientology for 45 minutes? I would love to. I would love to. I'm doing a documentary. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. It sure, shouldn't be any. forget that I don't. Any song that you like, we can ruin it here on Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. Yeah. Unless it's a, uh, against me song, because Derek would not allow that. Apparently he has rules that he likes to be put in place. You didn't hear about the rules? I did not, but I heard oh, about shit. after. Derek, I forgot to tell you. I forgot to talk to Jim about the rules of let's the interview sit down and that, discuss the rules. that you wanted him to talk to me about. Now, let's have to say for the record, first of all, all the guests today have been uh, excellent. Uh, yeah. Nick Kroll and John Mulaney were fantastic, and you really should see the show. It's a I, very, very funny play. Yes. But, uh, yeah, Laura Jane Grace was fantastic. Really good. Uh, I loved having Alice in here with her. I thought it added a great dynamic. Um, I know uh, D-Bag, did you have anything to do with booking her? Yes. Yes, I booked her. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. It's not like I tell you. Now, something. did you book her? Or did that little bump in the front of your trousers, book her. <laughs> no, <laughs> my mind. <booked> her. <laughs> you have never seen, never seen, the passion to book a guest that you've seen with D bag stressing out over this chick. Of like, course. Like to the here's 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 how it went down. He started giving me. I must have seventeen copies of this book training. <laughs> yeah. Because he just kept him, handing them to me. He goes, we're doing the night show before we're even doing this. This is back in August, I guess. It might, well, when did we start doing this? October? So September. Yes. D-Bag's like, hey, would you take Laura Jane Grace? And I knew who she was. I knew the Against Me story and everything. So I was like, yeah, that sounds interesting. Blah, blah, blah. And then we start catching wind that you and I are going to be doing this. And I'm like, you know, don't worry, Adrian, D-Bag. You guys will be cool. I'll take Word care of you. Know, we'll take care of you and blah, blah, blah. And, and D-Bag goes, oh, good, good. Do you think Jim would want Laura Jane Grace? And I'm like, that's what you're thinking. That's what you're thinking. So we move forward, and every single goddamn day since we started doing this show, and it's been a month and a half now, something about this Laura Jane Grace has come up. I don't know. Jim didn't take the book home, so I don't think he wants her on the show. I don't. I'm, he's yeah. Only because I, I don't go right home, so like a lot of times I won't take things home immediately. You, yeah. Eventually, you come, you sure. grab it, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't think he wants it, and you know. And then he told me when once it was booked, he goes, Jim, you know, Jim can't say all the stuff that he likes to say around Lauren Jane Gray. What were you worried I was going to say? That that wasn't quite how I phrased it. But okay, my thought. 
that whole kind of like community of punk and stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of PC kind of thing going on, and they're very gentle with their language often. Sure. So, what I was saying is like maybe if she walks in, maybe not just like drop the word tranny like casually in conversation, which I didn't. Expect no, no, that no. You I, would. I do appreciate You're, you you teaching me how to speak to the transgender community. <laughs> right. Because I've got right. since you listened to the album, I've had no experience with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You you wouldn't know what to say that offends them or doesn't offend them, yes. right? No, no, not at all. Especially but, yeah, yeah. The book is called. Co- um, uh, uh, Derek, do you want to spell it out? Yeah, How do we say a, this? A, I guess the, you you named your book the T word. What uh, uh, was it okay that the first thing I asked was now that word gets a lot of people mad? Have activists gotten on you for it? I think that was a pretty good opening question. No, it was good. That's it was like a, a great a, interview, and I didn't doubt your ability to do a great interview. But, but you did. There were some guidelines that you wanted oh, to yeah. get across. Okay, well, I just I'll, didn't want. What were you afraid I was going to say? I weren't afraid you were gonna say anything. I weren't afraid. Wait, did he say I weren't afraid? Hold on. He, he took a big gulp. Give me gulp. thirty seconds later. I, I, I weren't. Oh, I weren't afraid. He took a big gulp. <laughs> <laughs> I weren't afraid of nothing. I, <laughs> well, I weren't afraid. Let's hear. It. Let's just make did sure. Did you hear his nervous gulp? I did. I, did. Yeah, I yeah, heard yeah. that gulp. I thought sick baby was gonna vomit. In I front was hoping of us. he wouldn't. I thought he'd have one of those preemie yeah. pukes. Give me, give me that. Hang on. Okay, we're finding that clip. Usually after a gulp like that, you hear a little plastic bottle hit the floor. Adrian, <laughs> Adrian, am I rip- misrepresenting? I don't think so. Okay, not so far. Okay. Being fa- right. I just want to be fair. No, no, you, you've been fair. Okay. What were you afraid I was going to say? I weren't afraid you were going to say anything. <laughs> I <weren't. laughs> <laughs> Gulp. I weren't afraid. <laughs> and then, I mean, and then he was sitting there, he's like, he's like, I don't know. I'm trying to book this guest, but, you know, Roland hasn't given me an answer yet. And he's kind of, and like, he's stressed out about Roland because Roland was like, but I said yes right away. Of course. I was fine with it. And we, I'm the one who brought Bailey J to the show. We've had Venus Lux in here. We've had Mia Isabella twice. Like, what did you think I was going to say? Hey, nice tits. How big's your prick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you got a dick to go with those tits or what? Yeah, like, I, you know, I know how to speak to people. Do you? Yeah. Trans people don't want to be spoken to like they're children. They don't want to be talked oh, to in such a... they don't, Jim? Is that right? Yeah, if you're, if you're asking, people can sense the intent when you're asking them a question. Were you afraid that Jim would be mansplaining things to Laura? No, I didn't. And the reason that I work for the show and I love the show is because it's brutally honest and it's not sugar-coated or anything like that, and you do treat people like real people. Is that right. why you dressed up especially nice today? No, yeah. I, didn't, I, dressed up, I dressed up nice. Mm, new shirt, tea bag. Mm. New shirt, tea bag. I stiffied up a little bit. You did, didn't you? Admit Perhaps. that. Admit that. You thought about what you were going to wear today. Admit that. I wear a shirt like no, this no, no, in a no, different no, no. color every day. Did you specifically be like, okay, I want to make sure I look a little bit professional? Yeah, you do. Well, yeah, when you book a guest and you have a publicist coming with them, and right. you know, right. I put on sure. a collared shirt today instead a of a guest who has shirt. tattoos on their hands and a leather jacket. Yeah. Pack. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you want to put on your best sweater vest for a punk <laughs> guest? Yeah. Oh no, where's, Find the cardigan. where's my top hat? Johnny Rotten's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that yesterday you were telling, uh, you were talking to Travis about what time we needed to break? No, I just said that. No, Travis, you're lying. That's you not lied true to at me. All. Travis, you lied to me. No, I would never lie to you, Sam. Because Travis told me that you were like. You you went went into him and said, you know, we really should make sure that the guys break by nine tomorrow. Yeah, because that's exactly what he said. Otherwise, I wasn't the- telling him. I was suggesting. I was yeah. saying we should probably get a oh. break out of the way. Well, we typically don't know when to break. That's yeah, helpful. that's true. This is the first show. Yeah, I tell you this. You know what I do in, in you know what I do in my seat is fucking stare at these lights. How do you get them up on the ceiling? I don't understand it. <laughs> no, no, it's light inside, but the sun's outside. How did this happen? You were very worried that this guest that you like this guest that you cared about would be stuck out there. Yeah. Well, no, it was because... Because no break Sammy because, was in here. <laughs> no, it was because the other day Sam looked at me and he was like, wait, Laura's coming at the same time as Ellis? Mm-hmm. And you had a look on your face like you didn't want them to overlap too much. So I was like, let's make sure we get Ellis in, get some time uh, with Ellis. So I was doing that to try to make you happy. So that's... And you do everything to try to make me happy. I try. I know. It doesn't I seem to work. Little, you're, you're, you're worried about making Sam happy and then you're just like, oh, I'm worried Jim's not going to ask the proper questions. Yeah. He's like, let's make sure Sam's happy and Jim keeps that big fat trap yeah, shot. Yeah, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> keep, the, keep, those, keep those vulgar words from pouring out of Jim's mouth as long as Sam's happy. Yeah. Right? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Is that how you feel? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All I did was suggest that we might just... We have a really fucked up, amazing sense of humor on this show, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, 
a did lot you get of, nervous when Jason Ellis started hitting on her? Be uh, honest. No, I, I was a little like he oh, was shit. very, very, very forward. Yeah, and I was just trying to read the look on her face, like oh, like I hope. But I mean, she left and she enjoyed it. And but she before that, like him. Before that, were you a little flustered by the whole thing? I when just he wanted was, it to want, to go well. But and you were worried about that. I'm saying when Jason Ellis was like, well, "Yo, I'm knew, totally I hitting knew on Ellis you." Ellis is fucking cool. Jim's fucking cool. Well, well, no, if I, I use I, right language, I'm... right? No, you were nervous about it. Don't say Ellis is cool. Jim was cool. You were nervous about it. So I'm asking you, when Ellis was started hitting on her, were you like, "Oh shit, oh shit"? Not to say for a second, and right. then I read the situation, and I was like, "Oh, she's laughing. It's great." Adrian said that you put your hands up when Ellis started hitting on her. I was just like, <laughs> "Is that true, Adrian?" Here we go. Yeah. You, you did, did that. You, you did shake your hand. Go. So you were not. You were not. He he was not all well as it ends well, of course. I'm not saying that. I think that you're acknowledging that the segment went fantastic. Yeah, it did. It was great. Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate that. But there was a lot leading up to this segment. I mean, holy shit! <laughs> right? <laughs> like, do you think that the, the energy put into Laura, Laura uh, was a bit much? Not to say the Lord's Lord's a great guest. We have lots of great guests on the show, though. And, sure. I, and by the way, D Bag, I'm so glad you booked her because she was fantastic. She was very good. It was a lot, though, right? Yeah, I just maybe it's just my personality type. Right, when flap I, those when gums, I to, huh? Well, I just <laughs> yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> I like getting things set in stone. Sure, and right. Things kept changing, and then it became like it became a drag, and then it got to the point where I was just like, I just wanted an answer. Why did they say a drag? That's offensive language. Yeah, what if she's <laughs> fucking <laughs> listening, bro? <laughs> oh, I, yeah, okay. exactly. They don't like that. It's transphobic. How do you know, Jim? Did you ask Derek if they like that or not? How do you know <laughs> what they like or not? I'm like? just assuming they wouldn't, because <laughs> usually when they walk in. I go, Tranny! Yeah. Welcome to the show. That's Let's always get how I the address. fucking he, she in here. That's how I address all of our trans guests. Remember when Mia came in? I was like, she male coming yeah. up. Hey, yeah, only lady that I'm worried about tripping over her dick. Am I right? Sit down. Hey, hey, sit down, pecker tits. <laughs> Were you worried he would call Laura pecker tits? <laughs> No, I didn't think he would call her pecker tits. <laughs> what, yeah. did you, what did you think? Tell me what you thought I might, I might say. Like, what were, what were, what were, because you're a paranoid guy. Yeah. Like, you worry. You're a bit of a worry wart. Is yeah. that wrong? You're putting your hand up. Just like, try to do my job well. But am I mischaracterizing you, or are you a bit of a worry wart? Let's take a survey. Adrian, do you think he's a worry wart? <laughs> Uh, Travis, do you think he's a worry wart? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Roland. <laughs> Roland is voting yes. As well. Wait, wait. Bring Roland up to the microphone. Roland, come here. <laughs> d not having a good no, time. No, he's not at all. He's sitting back unhappy. He's relentless. Hello. Uh, uh, Roland. Yes. Did you think, uh, how did you feel about uh, working with, because uh, obviously Roland is the head talent booker of the channel. Yeah. You and D-Bag worked hand in hand on this one. I hope there's a first and last. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a lot? Yes. <laughs> Why, Roland? It's not like it's Billy Bob. It's, it's, it's the person. <laughs> right, but you're saying that, 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 that yeah, I did. I will. It, it, it is. Here's it's Laura that, Jane, not Billy Bob. That's exactly part of it, though. Just what? Because it's not like an A-list celebrity, but it's a good human story. Yeah, you know. So and the same Billy Bob's amazing. That dog is a good human story, but it's not the same stress. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you see Roland's point? Like, does Roland have a point? Do you think where like like to put way? I mean. Way, way, way more energy. Sure. Into this one mm -hmm. than like some of the huge A listers or something. Sure, like the lack of respect for Colin Quinn when he first came in. Right. Like you remember, you were like he was like one tea bag, right? And you were like, get what the story. Yeah, and you went you. down. Yeah. But I bet you, but if uh, Laura Jane wanted tea bags, oh my god, sure. <laughs> he oh made sure god. she got one tea bag. <laughs> right. In the right. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> if, if Laura Jane, if she wanted a yeah, tea bag, you'd probably say yeah, but for both of us, right? Yeah. Reciprocating, right? Some of the English breakfast. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there was there was severe disrespect thrown the way. Sure. What Quinn. else? What else was he worried I was going to do? Because he won't tell me. What was the number tell. one fear that you had for Jim? I didn't really have a fear. Then it why was just it was just my thought was just keep in mind that this person doesn't come from our world of humor. Right. So what did you think that Jim? Like what's a and nightmare? And didn't have a prior relationship with Jim. I know that he knows how to respect people. What's a nightmare scenario that. though? Like for you because you're like a bit of a, a reason I brought up you being a worry wart. Yeah. And we found evidence that you were and a bit of a paranoid guy sometimes. You know you are. Is you think of the nightmare scenarios. Not that this is definitely what's going to happen, but you get haunted by these nightmare scenarios. True or false? Haunted is an inaccurate word. I mentioned it once. Do you think he gets haunted by him, Adrian? Yes, he does. He does. He does. He does. I don't want to speak for him, but yes. Yes, okay. All right. So, which means that that 
becomes a scenario that gets visualized. So what's the nightmare scenario with Jim that we were afraid of? Yeah, what is it? Like, tell me, like, I, it, I know you're separated from it now, but, like, let's say Laura's coming in tomorrow, and I'm asking you, what's the, what's the nightmare? I, I don't know, that just some crude joke about fucking trannies or something, and it, out of context for her, she doesn't know about his history or stuff like that. And then it's like, oh, like, I'm here to tell, like, my story, and now it's just, like, this overly sexualized thing for... You know what I mean? You're just like making someone uncomfortable. I would never want a guest to be uncomfortable. The gym would not read the guest. Right, program. I wouldn't understand how to do that. I'm not doubting his ability to do so. It's just a particular situation with this person. Yeah, no, he's right. I probably would have tripped over it and said something clumsy and silly. You think so? Sure. It's like, well, I'm just here to tell my story. And you're like, yeah, well, what if I suck your dick? And yeah. She's like, what? <laughs> What? Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's not cool. plop your prick on the table. Use it as a bookmark. <laughs> yeah. Were you thinking about doing that? Sure. <laughs> That's, yeah, that, that I'm with Derek, he looked, dude. he looked concerned. I'm like, uh, I don't know. Because yeah, well, you didn't do it for Derek? Yeah, no. That's why I was sitting there uh, this morning at like 8.55. I saw Alice outside, but you and I were on a roll. So I was like, guess who's waiting? And then I saw D-Bag, and I was like, fuck, I got a break. Yeah. I don't want the boss getting mad. Yeah, he's so mad he doesn't want us to be late. <laughs> yeah. well, obviously, he's always a month early. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that? Do you think being born prematurely made it so that you like things had to be on time? Yes. You, you think so? You're talking off the mic. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, you think yeah. so? How do you feel right now? Aggravated. Why? What are you aggravated Because I'm at? just trying to be a producer, uh -huh. and I'm trying to do my job the best that I can. Uh -huh. And I'm, I mean, fine. It's What? I just, I'm just trying to do my job. Right. And it's like, I don't know why I need to be, like... Made fun of? Well, not made you are fun implying of, that just, one of the hosts doesn't know how to do an interview. That's not what I was doing. Do you think that's what you're doing? Yeah, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, that's... Fine, then. That's yeah. that's not what my intent was. You know, it's so. important that we learn lessons. Right? Okay. Do you feel like this is a teaching moment? Sometimes, D-Bag, I worry that when we, when we do things like this, you don't take away the teaching moments. That's true. And you just get kind of upset by it and think that we're just picking on you. Do you get the teaching moments here? Yes. Yeah. Because I'll tell you this. You're very good at, 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 at a lot of your responsibilities. Sure. Your YouTube channel is en fuego right now. Grooming you know what that the, means? Good at grooming the mustache. Well yeah, done. Yeah, exactly. You have a great mustache. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you have not gotten a haircut since we told you not to, correct? No, I have not. Because we're going to do a mushroom haircut, so you look like AJ Soprano from season one, right? Oh, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we do have to, this is, we're, we're evolving. What did, what did Laura Jane Gray say today? Evolve, right? She's not tra she's not transitioned. She's transitioning. That's what you're doing. I'm transitioning you. We're transitioning you. That's right. Into but I'm, I guess I'm being transitioned too, from my crude humor right. into an appropriate. With Dbeck's making you into a host. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I've isolated a lot of guests with my crude, crass jokes. Right. Yeah. Because if there's one thing people come out of here, it's like that little Jimmy Norton is really unlikable. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll be like, hey, your book's called Tranny. How about you stick it in my shit or we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tranny, huh? I guess you are one. Is that it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, why don't you talk to us about it, ho-hum? Yeah. You know who's not going to buy this book? God. That's How right. How about that? <laughs> no, but you understand that, you know, there are teaching moments, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to go home. You're going to have to go home upset, but I, my hope, my prayer. So he learns. Is exactly. The, you, you step out of the muck and you go, you know what the takeaway from that was? And you figure out what the takeaway was. You know, ask Adrian if he's ever gone home upset. <laughs> Many a sleepless night, courtesy of Sam. That's right. That's right. But it makes us better, right, boss? That's right. That's right. And maybe it should be two sleepless nights because the implication was that Jim didn't know how to interview people. Sure. But you're great at YouTubes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that is a talent. And guess what? Look around the room. Who's able to, who's able to uh, edit video like you? No one, right? That's right. That makes you the man in that department, right? But then what happens? We step outside, we go a little crazy, and things get a little, uh, a little painful. Why is why is Roland waving at me? Oh yeah, come on in, Jane Lynch. How are you? I'm so good. We were just talking to D Bag. He's not having a good time, so he's he's glad that you're here. How are here. you? What's going on with you, D Bag? Is, <laughs> is there anything I shouldn't say to Jane? He's always, he's worried that I'm gonna make a crass joke. We had a guest in before. Yeah, oh. and as one of the hosts, he doesn't think I know how to talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> we caught D Bag trying to uh, uh, behind the scenes give instructions to Jim as to how to how to host. Our, the show. our guest was transgendered, and he was worried I was gonna make a crass joke. 
Uh, okay. Well, they could probably take it. Yeah, I think so. You would hope. Yeah. I, I would. I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. What's going on, Jane? Um, I, I'm I'm uh, touting my Christmas album. I'm, I have a um, big band Christmas album called uh, Swinging Little Christmas. So <sighs> they grabbed me and said, "Talk to the boys." So I'm, <laughs> and I'm, I remember the last time I was here. I don't think I talked about whatever I was touting. Uh huh. And we just had a great conversation. I'm open to any of it. Just uh, download uh, Swinging Little Christmas on iTunes, and then I'm open. I'm open for questions. Well, I tell you, I'll I'm take gl- your calls. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad that you're making this album. <laughs> Album. You know yeah. why? Why? Because to me, the one, the part of of forty year old virgin that fucking still makes me laugh every time I see it is when you start singing in Spanish. Yes, I, Do you I know, love that. A little inside information for you: that is actually taken from a dialogue, or as we said in Spanish class, a dialgo. Oh, um, right from the ALM Spanish uh, uh, Spanish one level one book. I, is it a hard language to learn? Believe me, I, I have. Easy. I really want to learn Spanish. It would help with certain online communications. <laughs> <laughs> and Spanish is actually not not a hard one to learn. It's about. not right. It's not like no. French. French or Russian, or well, you know, French is a Romance language as well, and the, it, they're both they're both Romance languages along with Latin and, and Italian. But um, I, maybe it's just because I, I we I, it's, it's around. It's more it's more prevalent in. Um, the My mother States. made me take French in high school because she thought it made me it would make me seem smarter. Yeah, it was like it was like an educated person's language, which was yeah. fucking terrible. I wish I had taken Spanish because <laughs> yeah, it's so much more practical. There's no practical it use for it in the United no, States. No, no, or no. Latin. That's you know, there's no use for Latin at all anymore unless you're doing the the mass or being a priest yeah. or being a priest. Yeah. I don't even think. Well, I'm sure they still learn it, but it's it's a dead language. Let's face it, beautiful language, but it's kind of not yeah, useful. When I was in middle school, they got all the smart kids. They offered them to take Latin. Yeah, and I'm like if you're smart, just have them learn a language that you can they use because they yeah. can master it. Yeah, exactly. Like if they master Latin, what are you going to do? Yeah, I know. I Nothing. Know. Nothing with it except you know maybe do an old timey mass. That's about <laughs> it. How many uh, how many years did you take it? Um, I took Spanish for two years, so I don't really know it that well, but I find a way to butcher it in almost every um, uh, character that I've like created on my own I, I do bad Spanish well these these um, weird apps and stuff you can mm-hmm. like you can look things up immediately now and there's the, like when you're like on Google Facebook translate yeah well when you're on Facebook right. it's like translate this so it's getting to a point where I think eventually they'll be able to map our voices so well yeah. that you'll just talk <laughs> and it will translate in what is almost That's, your voice would be kind of cool wouldn't it yeah I guess I don't know I guess it would take away the intimacy of actually listening to somebody's inflection and, and it does do something about like uh, taking away culture yeah, like you don't have to exactly. learn anyone else's culture yeah. you're just well, you don't have to learn math anymore. I mean, it's like all this stuff is well, kind I'm of. I'm grateful for that. Yeah, not aspect. learning math. Yeah, anymore. not learning math. <laughs> don't have yeah. any uh, aptitude toward that at all. But you know what I mean? It's like eventually, yeah. it's just, just going to. It's just going to be we're all just communicating easily, and it won't matter. I'm Maybe hoping. we won't even use words anymore. Maybe it'll just be like you know, um, yes. psychic. And... That's, that's right. Points at genitals and then money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'll get that simple. Could make interactions much much easier. Yeah, it certainly will. Yeah. So how are you doing? Are you are I'm you good. like a lot of uh, a lot of uh, folks are coming up heart and upset of the yeah. whole election are you like handling it or are you like yeah you know i, I in the beginning it was kind of tough um it, it felt uh it felt catastrophic. What was so tough about this one compared to like George Bush? Because like you know, oh, so many big, people in Hollywood. What is it that's made people so upset? Well, with George Trump? Bush is a sane human being, you know, and I'm just concerned about Trump. I, I, he was really ugly in the um, election, and he was, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, it just uh, you couldn't predict what he was going to do, and you know, it makes uh, like Romney and George Bush look like, yeah, that's okay. I'm even thinking Mike Mike Pence is fine, right? Because at least <laughs> but, you know where right. he stands, right? Yeah, like, I'm at not least sure. Sure you know. about Trump, and you just have to hope for his higher angels, and um, that that they will, you know. And uh, there are a lot of people around him who really think he's awesome. So uh, you got to hope that you know uh, we'll learn what that is at some point. So far, do you think like the mo- I've only seen him talk a little bit so far. He did yeah. the sixty minutes interview. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a different. Yeah, it is. It's a different guy, and it's what was uh, it was very. Uh, I w- it was kind of a relief to see him. It was right. Yeah, yeah, kind of nice. So do you yeah. think people are uh, hopefully the reactions will kind of taper off? I think. There's going to be. Uh, I think people are going to continue protesting. There's going to be. A, there's going to be vigilance in terms of that. Really, it could be. For a a t- while. It could be a tough time. What is yeah. the people are protesting? What is it like? What is the the basic theme? What do they want? I, I think that people think that the race baiting and the yeah um, that he so yeah. doesn't represent them. You know what I mean? And because and it got so anti ugly, them. not right. even represent, but uh, anti, like you know, right? And yeah, that, that's a that's a scary. He thing. said some things that probably could be interpreted as that. Definitely, yeah. He probably yeah. Should interpreted. He said them. <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah, with <laughs> the Mexican thing got twisted a little bit, but he didn't say that well. He didn't say the immigration thing well. Like, yeah. wanting legal. Well, he said it well for a, for some people who are listening with a, a, a with certain ears. And, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna. It's it's um. I think that's we got to come together though. Maybe this is our opportunity. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't do. Any 
any YouTubes of like uh, crying into the camera no, or anything. Didn't didn't. That's the funny part to me. It's yeah. I get people hating him, but yeah. it's funny to watch the, the, the self promotion people are doing, yeah. like weeping into camera just to get it out there so people can go, "Oh, look at so and so's emotions." She really cares. <laughs> yeah, is that silly? Yeah, I mean, yeah. didn't even vote. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but if yeah. you didn't vote, I don't want to hear from. You. I normally don't vote, but mm-hmm. I did this time, even though I don't say who, because votes are secret. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk politics yeah. you, here. You, you know, you normally don't vote. I, I no. vote all the time, and I guess I don't care if somebody doesn't vote. I really don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, we I have, probably should. Yeah, we have to bring you, <laughs> let you go to your next thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm glad you popped in, yeah, Jane thanks Lynch. So much, you guys. I appreciate and, uh, it. And everybody, go to iTunes and download the Christmas album. Yeah, Is that right? Yeah, Little Christmas. Okay, that's very, big very band, fun. Big band uh, album, and it Chris, swings like Chris, crazy. Christmas music is fun. I love it. It's the best. It's, it's the best. Thank, Thank you very much, uh, Jane Lynch. Right, take care. See you. And uh, we're going to take off. The show's yeah, done. Yeah, our show is finished. Done. We're yeah. done. I'm heading to Florida. I got the improv in uh, Fort Lauderdale tomorrow and Saturday. Yes. And then I'm back uh, for other gigs leading up. Who is that? Who's who? That blonde that just walked by. I don't know. I didn't it's see her. Christy Brinkley. Holy fuck. Oh. She looks great. Holy fuck. She complained that Jason Ellis got her and we didn't. What the fuck? <laughs> God damn, does she look good. <laughs> what shouldn't I say to her? <laughs> <laughs> D-Bag doesn't take it well. No, does he doesn't. It? No, he doesn't. He's very upset. He is. He is. Trees. Huh? Don't talk about trees. Don't t- oh, why don't, in, why don't in, talk about in, trees? Into the mic. What did you say, Roland? Don't talk about trees. Why? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the Billy Joel. Oh, Billy Joel. You know what? <laughs> I apologize. Let me, uh... <laughs> I'm trying to stop it. <laughs> you know what? Uh, My fault. <laughs> you know what sound by D-Bag was worried about you playing? Oh. That's what he was worried about. Oh, I ended some... Oh, shit. This bitch got a dick. <laughs> oh, I probably didn't even think. Or you lucky D-Bag, I you worried about that? You were worried I was going to go, hey, Laura Jane. I've never heard that name on a man before, but I'm sure it's all right. <laughs> oh, that would have been bad, huh? I actually forgot about that clip. Is that what you were worried about? I didn't even think about that. Today. Okay, me neither. Bad. Yeah, I wouldn't have played those for a Trump. I'm not an offensive asshole. Troy, you think we were unfair at the end of the show here? Absolutely not. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he just worries about everything. You know, the, the thing about him, too, is he does such a great job. Hey, would you give him a hug? Sure. Adrian, get over there and give him a hug, too. Ah. Roland, would you jump in Tell on the group hug? No. You're not going to do it? Okay, yeah, there it is. Ah. Look who's better. Ah. Look who's better. Come Jim here. is going to be in Florida on Friday and Saturday. You can go to jimnorton.com for tickets. Yes. And uh, I'll be back here live tomorrow. Uh, so everybody, yeah. oh, no. William H. Macy's coming in tomorrow? tomorrow? I'm annoyed I can't be here for him. Yeah, I would love to do him with you. Yeah, I love him. But uh, I'll tell him you said hello. Please do. He doesn't okay. know me. I will. Oh, hello. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to go do Jason Ellis' show right now. Bye. Goodbye, everybody.